Hello, welcome to Pod Songs with me, Jack Stafford, where normally I interview inspiring people in service to others and write a song about them. Now, these guests have already been on the show and we talk about their revolutionary singing technique, episode 58. Um, and I got such a, an amazing response to that episode that I've got them back to record a masterclass episode with five professional singers who volunteered so that we can all get an insight into how they teach. It's a long episode, two and a half hours, but is overly condensed and should really be a, a day workshop or even a week long. So it's just scratching the surface. And as I said, there's no song at the end. I've already written one song about singing and we don't need more unnecessary music. Also, the audio isn't perfect because I had to record via Zoom, but the truth shines through. So please enjoy this vocal masterclass episode with Lisa Paglin and Mariana Brilla. I think we're just going to dive straight in, um, do like a round table format, um, because there's so many of us, it could be quite confusing if we all try and speak at once. So we'll give, give everyone their, their their time with you. And we're going to start with uh, Nikita, Ev Nikita in uh, Canada. A little bit of things. Lisa and I pretty much can make a diagnosis, let's say, of a, you know, get the picture in about like five seconds. And we know, you know, just from the first, the get go because it's a question of posture. It's a question of regular vibrations as opposed to irregular vibrations. So it's it's immediate. And we briefly <clears throat> looked at everybody just before getting started. Yes, we've seen your and, videos. I think we've seen everyone. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to say that by and large, and it's not your fault, it's the way the industry is today. Everybody's concentrated on tone. Yeah. And that is not correct. Tone is important. Tone has to be balanced. But it's <clears throat> the tone behind my words. It's it's hidden practically. We hear it. It's in the subconscious mind and we hear it. We perceive it with our subconscious mind. <clears throat> it's sort of like I think anybody's mother at some point will say to, especially her son, I don't like the tone of your voice when you're saying that. Because <laughs> that's where we're picking up, the tone. But the most important thing in singing as well as speaking are the words. The words have to dominate. And in most of the cases today, they don't. They don't dominate. Tone dominates. And that's not correct because <coughs> tone has to be uh, quiet and passive. internal. Passive. passive. Yeah. Tone is passive. Yeah. Tone only has two dimensions, actually. So that's not going to be active if you don't have a third dimension. The third dimension in singing is the word, and you have to have the word. Well, let's go ahead. So with that's the questions. just a brief, that's... brief little thing. Of... Well, I think you've intimidated everyone now, Mariana, because no, I'm, I'm, I'm so into. When I come on to you, I always have to make sure I'm within myself, my voice as well. I, I was yeah. very self-conscious speaking with you. And so, but now. <laughs> yeah, you sound great. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, okay. I'm okay. Questions. So see what questions. Go ahead. All right, so let's first uh, introduce Nikita. All right, hi, Mariana and Lisa. Um, I'm really happy to be here and have the opportunity to speak with both of you. So thank you, Jack. Well, we're yeah. always happy too to share our <laughs> not with everybody, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm a singer-songwriter from Canada and I sing and record my own music, but I make my main income by singing in lounges and restaurants. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it for the last six years or so. And in the past, before I was specifically diagnosed with whatever was going on, um, I was singing maybe like five nights a week, um, give or take. And eventually, I guess I just sort of burnt out. And I, I think I was really singing through an, a vocal injury, trying to convince myself that I didn't have one until it got to the point where my voice was no longer making proper sound. And it, it sounded like um, something from a horror film. <laughs> and um, I went and I, yeah, it was not. It was an evening. It wasn't fun. Generally, did you sing? Yeah, How many fine. hours in an evening 
were you obligated to sing? So typically it was three to four hours, most of the time, three hours. Yeah. So um, one of my main questions to start off um, with your technique, I know it's all about balance and balancing tone, air and word. And I was wondering with that, what's your opinion on like also balancing in vocal rest and what's your opinion on rest? Oh yes. Rest. Oh, well, can I ask, we, <clears throat> we do have an opinion on that. I just wanted to ask you though, you said you got a, a diagnosis of some sort. What, what happened? Right. Okay. So, um, I got sick in November and that's when my, the vo the voice, I couldn't sing. I could barely speak properly. So, um, I went into a voice pathologist and they did the scope yeah. and they were able to see that I had, they, they called it a polyp and, and they also said bruising, like it, my vocal cord was completely discolored, yeah. um, on one side and my polyp was on the other side. Correct. Yeah. That's typical. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we basically call any form of polyp, cyst, node, anything like that, they're all lesions that happen on the vocal cords. Basically what happens is at a certain point for many different reasons and not everybody gets them, uh, some blood is let. It's a little lesion, it's a little injury. After the blood comes out of the vocal cord, then the vocal cord starts to react like an oyster and starts to make a pearl of some sort to cover up the area that was hurt. And so you get a polyp or you get a node or you get a cyst, depend or cysts can also be congenital, of course, people can be born with them, but you're not born with nodes or polyps and they're always the result of some form of injury. So it could have been maybe one moment or it could have been were over they, a period of years that you were just tired and stressed she's singing out. three and four hours yeah. a night, that'll yeah. do it. Nobody there, can sustain that. <laughs> um, in the United States years ago, my, my parents were also musicians and belonged to musicians <coughs> union in the States. I don't know if you have the same thing where you are, but union rules were uh, for singers in particular that you did 45 minutes and a 15 minute break. And uh, in classical music, uh, generally speaking, even in the most, uh, let's say strenuous forms of opera, Okay, people think of a Wagner opera as something that's particularly loud and strenuous. Singers don't sing more than an hour, usually less usually than an 45 hour. Usually 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, singing a long time, especially at full volume, especially, you know, under the stress of being in an environment where you have to be uh, entertaining, it's, that's well, very, just, very stressful. Just, just to give you, I mean, it is stress, period, because yeah. uh, if you take an opera that's three or four hours long, in the case of Wagner, uh, a singer will lose about five kilos after one performance. Yeah, well, yeah, you know. because you know you're under heavy lights. You're yeah. wearing a costume that might weigh sixty pounds. You're, you know, and, and it's emotional and the whole thing. You, you, you're stressed. You know, it's a lot of stress on the body. It's more so than playing a, a football game. You know. Uh, and not, not talking about the vocal strenuousness because the singing should be easy. That shouldn't well, add to your stress, of course. You mentioned <laughs> a, a football game. They've actually um, taken some... Um, yeah, they did some tests. Tests. Yeah, they tried, and the, yeah. the singer, uh, in, let's say in a stressful situation, and certainly yours was, even though it was an opera, but it was three to four hours. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, yeah. In an opera, a singer will sing about 45 minutes to an hour in a, in, in a Wagner opera, for instance. Mm -hmm. And they use more energy in those those that amount of time, time that yeah. amount of time, yeah. that a soccer player does in a game. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a very stressful. You have to really know how to handle yourself oh. with balance, so you don't feel that. Another thing, of course. Sorry, I have allergies, so <clears throat> if I start sneezing or coughing, it's <clears throat> it's just normal for me right now. Singing in lo in lounges or in places where, of course, there's noise. Naturally, you're not singing on stage in a quiet environment. That's extremely stressful because yeah. you're getting <clears throat> noise into your ears. Anything that goes in the ears goes to the throat, whether we want it to or not, whether we notice it or not, because there's a direct connection between the ears and the vocal cords. So what happens if you're singing in an environment like that, 
If you're wearing earphones, maybe a little better, you don't hear the noise as much, but still you're going to, you're noticing it, is that you're going to be fighting to hear yourself, thinking that you might have to make yourself be heard, which is a big mistake, you know, and in general, just be singing with too much energy. Well, you know, apropos of that, Lise, I feel singing is extremely important. Yeah. And if you're singing in a lounge, are you, do you have the spotlight on you? Do you have the attention on you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, these yeah. are all things you have to have a cameo in a situation like that. You yeah, can't so just be entertaining. You have to draw the attention for those half hour or whatever you're going to do at the moment. Yeah. And that's it. For the same pay, by the way. Of course. <laughs> you don't of course. back off your pay. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You get paid. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get the pay first. <laughs> I did that once. I put it in my shoe, and then I went out and I did my job. <laughs> yeah, put the check in your shoe, and then, then you go on stage. You, you know you uh, got it. <laughs> Um, however, our, what's our view on vocal rest? Well, I mean, vocal rest is essential, but it doesn't take care of vocal problems. You have to have vocal rest, and that includes talking. And if you, uh, I think you, everybody knows that we shouldn't yell, we shouldn't talk over noise, we shouldn't scream at football games. Of course, we know this kind of thing. But a lot of other things also create vocal tiredness. And one of them for singers is the one of the big ones especially if you sing with um i don't know how to say some of these words in english but you have the um the audio coming the feedback coming at you of your instrumentalists it's one thing if you're acoustical that's one thing you're doing with a guitar or a piano on stage but if you have all the feedback coming at you you'll tend to sing too loudly push on the voice because you can't hear yourself there are tricks that you can use to for instance it depends on if you're wearing uh an, uh, how do you plug? say that? Uh, not an ear plug, but that's a good idea. In ear monitors. In ear monitor, and if you're listening to yourself or you're hearing the other musicians, it, uh, there are things that you have to do so that you don't push. Well, there's things you know? about the ear too. The left ear is the internal ear. No, I mean it's the. Well, the it's the, what we hear from the outside. Yeah, generally, in. yeah. The other ear is what then? They are internal monitor, usually. Yeah. The internal usually, monitor. You have to know where usually, to put the monitor. Usually. It isn't always the case. And left handed people, about 50% of left handed people have it the opposite. But oh, most crazy. of the time, we have a pilot ear with which we tune ourselves. And that's usually our right ear. And you can all try it. You can try it by <clears throat> plugging up your right ear just like that and then saying something, making yeah. vocal sound to yourself. And then try the other ear. And see if you hear a difference. Yeah, try it now, all of you. Just yeah, plug sure. up one ear and continue talking. Yeah, just and then we'll stop and then plug up the other. Yeah, and you'll you, hear quite a difference. You know, go like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and you can hear usually that there's there's a different sound. One of them okay. might sound closer to you. Yeah. One of them might sound further away from you, or darker or brighter. Yes, right. Okay. One is more external, <laughs> and the other one is internal. Right. And. Um, you know, yeah, and that's important to know because if you're on stage or you're in an environment in any case where you have a lot of musicians, especially if you're dealing with drums, uh -huh. and drummers yeah. don't like to be told to be quiet, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have them behind you, <clears throat> put a plug in your left ear. Drummers use plugs too. You know, you can get the musician kind, the spiral kind, you can get them handmade for you. You plug up your left ear, you'll still hear everything, but you'll hear a little more balanced so you won't feel such a need to sing louder to push over what you're hearing because yeah. that's a big mistake try to hear yourself is a big mistake you don't want to damage your ears at any cost you know anyway the first i guess the first question is about vocal rest um yeah we have to think at any given moment in our lives that we're using our musical instruments so <coughs> sorry <coughs> I'm just <clears throat> allergic today. Uh, when you're in any kind of a situation, going to a store, meeting a friend at a coffee shop, whatever, you're studying voice all the time. You're using your instrument to communicate with. You can't beat it up ever. Well, if it's you know? a noisy atmosphere, then don't force yourself to speak loudly. Ask your friend, could we leave so we could talk? Yeah. Enough? Normally. Okay, so that was, and I think that answered that question. Did it? Is that okay? 
I we object to people singing three and four hours at, the, at in one stretch. That's really not very good. If you have a job like that and you have to do it, you must demand breaks, and some of your pieces have to be quiet. Um, I've been lucky just because, well, I'm maybe not lucky, maybe that's not the right word, but um, I am allowed to be amplified. So I do sing through a mic always. Okay. So I never necessarily feel like I need to push it. And just the way that I sing, I think I'm a little bit more of a quieter singer um, mm -hmm. in general. So I think that that's why I've been able to get away with it for so long. And I do always take breaks and something that, um, I guess this is the perfect lead into my next question, something that I started doing since I saw the voice pathologist is I do straw exercises. Don't do that. No, I'm gonna Don't oh, do you, I was going to ask what your opinion was with the straws. I can, I'm going to start swearing now. I can tell you why. That, <clears throat> yeah. I can tell you why that is not good. Because Please. when you scroll, anyway, don't when you over too far, they can't okay. see you. I want to get in there with you. That's what I want. <laughs> when you blow into a straw, you're using much more air than you use to make a tone. Yes. So you're forcing your throat. And then you're Just making that tone. Blowing is forcing. You're making tone. It's really. It, don't do that. That's very injurious. It's very popular right now. It's it's in okay it's fashionable it has nothing to do with reality it's just something every singer now is handing these straws out you have to purchase them different sizes different shapes it's nonsense you don't need them the there's air, no reason the, to use those the quantity of air that you use to make a tone is just about the same as you use a light whisper we're going to so get a million uh people writing in after we say this <laughs> Bullshit. This this is why it's good to ask these questions then, I, I guess, because there's so many, like you mentioned in the last podcast, and we were talking a little bit about this as well um, before going live here, but so many teachers are teaching this technique and... Um, yeah. No. It's, it's, yeah, it, so th it's good to get another perspective and, and kind of understand um, your point of view. The okay. way I understood the straw and why it was helping was that it, it controlled the amount of air that you were pushing through. This is the That's whole point. The this is what is I wanted to no say. No push, you see, you use the word push. Okay, first of all, Let's you don't push. control the air. Are you controlling your air right now? We're talking. Are you controlling your air consciously? No. Oh, hey, That's, that's the, the point. point. What do you okay. need to control your air for? <laughs> what? Why? We we are born knowing how to sing. We are born, if we're not, you know, if we're healthy children, can sing from birth. There's no difference. This is all nonsense. On top of it, it creates a tension in the vocal cords that's extremely harmful because in normal speech, as everybody will notice, and I don't know if we're already answering a question about this from somebody else, we take little sips of air all the time, spontaneously, without ever thinking about it. We never think, now I need to prepare my breath, and now I'm going to do something. We never do that. If you do that, what happens? We could ask everyone to take a nice big breath and hold it for a second and feel it. Just take a breath. What are you holding your breath with? Your my chest. Cords. That's oh, yeah. Your vocal it, cords, you've already blocked your... The your, vocal cords are necessary cords. for that. They're very <coughs> useful little items that we also need when we have to go underwater or when we have to give birth or go to the toilet or any other number of things we need force in our bodies for lift a heavy object. When you're doing that, those are vocal cords. It's horrible. Okay. Therefore, if you take an extra air and then you blow through a straw and make sound. Your poor little vocal cords are being asked to hold back the air and vibrate at the same time. Vocal cords aren't supposed to do that. They're supposed to do one or the other. Well, may, may I say one fundamental rule? Tone starts after the exhalation. Yeah, we'll talk about this more. <laughs> Not, and then tone, because you've already closed your throat with excess air, Yeah. holding back excess air. Yeah, it's, the principle <clears throat> is incorrect. I understand that the straw exercise, not technique, there's no such thing as a straw technique, that's absurd. The straw right. exercise was invented for people who had problems with their throats, not for singers. It was invented a long time ago, possibly for people who might have had trouble with adduction of the cords. So 
it was a trick to get your chords to close. That's one thing, but that has nothing to do with singing, and it really has... It's injurious. Yeah. We've had people in our studio who came from a long use of of straw exercises, and their vocal cords were swollen and misshapen. It's, it's really not good. Anyway, that's, that's actually something that I noticed when starting to do the straws was um, I would only do it for small amounts of time, but I, I, I would feel tired yeah, after, bet. after doing it, even, even after certain exercises specifically yeah. one, but not for a long period of time. And, um, I definitely could feel tired and I was just thinking like, Oh, I just did like 15 minutes of exercises in five. Cool. But yeah, it's a great, it's great to hear your perspective on it. No, I would, <clears throat> I would get away from that instantly. By the way, were you operated on for your polyp? I was not. I actually, um, I did about three days of vocal rest, which was on my own. I wasn't really supposed to apparently be completely silent, mm -hmm. which I was told by the um, voice pathologist afterwards. Uh, but once I w went and realized it was a polyp, um, I just did the straw exercises daily. I did them five times a day for about five minutes a day, um, along with stretches, lots of stretching. Um, and eventually my voice came back and we did this scope a second time and the polyp had shrunken. Mm -hmm. um, it might still be there. It was still there when I saw, checked it out a couple of months ago, but it had substantially decreased in size. Mm -hmm. I can say where you have to be careful is you still have a little bit too much airflow going to where the cords. Mm. So let's say, do you remember Marilyn? Well, you're so young. All of you are but so you young. Might have seen, but yeah. uh, once Marilyn Monroe sang "Happy Birthday" to Jack Kennedy, yeah, and she was it's like a this. Famous video. Happy birthday to you. That's very healthy. That when you hear that friction, ah. Tone is friction. Tone air, vibrated air is tone. So you have to have that friction so that it can spark. And have, if you push, push a little bit or use too much air, you're going to feel driven. And you have been driven enough with three and four hours in restaurants. Mm. And, you know, you have to take a back seat now and think about it differently. When you want to talk, don't talk if there are others talking. You know, you know what you know. And if people are, are talking, they're not going to listen to you anyway. So only say what's necessary when it's necessary. And call your the attention to yourself by being silent, saying, excuse me, I'd like to say something. And then go for it like that when you have the attention. Don't fight for it. Okay. Thank you so much. I think we have to move on to the next question. <laughs> yeah, let's Thank move. you. I really appreciate it. Maybe we can have some more time at the end if we, because uh, I'm sure you have many more questions. But uh, we, love, we love singers, so our hearts are completely open to. <laughs> we yeah. could be talking for hours, yeah. but let's, yeah. you know. Okay. Well, let's move on to Tiz, who's in Toronto, but originally from Ireland, and has had quite a few vocal problems in the past as well. He was originally a drummer, and then switched to singing. Hello, Tiz. Yes. Hello. Thanks so much for your time, ladies. Really appreciate the the expertise and insights. Uh, yeah. Um. I guess my main question and kind of, you know, along similar lines is I suffered with uh, vocal nodules um, and went to speech and language therapist, which didn't really help in any way, at least in my, my opinion. Um, and eventually with vocal rest. And then I was just saying to the guys before this that I found, and this probably contradicts a lot of what you guys were saying previously. So maybe it wasn't this that kind of fixed it, but doing Wim Hof breath holds um healed in my opinion at least whether that's completely incorrect or not and uh, my vocal nodules they were still there and there was still a lot of break and breathiness coming through in certain registers and um, so i was just wondering what you think is the main cause if there is a singular cause if it's just putting too much pressure on the vocal cords um your, your tone is basically i would describe it throaty. your tone is throaty you gotta get it out of the throat yeah and, and yeah. because the, you've got to use your Resonators and the resonators are <coughs> largely in the head, and then you have you can hear them if you yeah test resonance. Then you keep your legal man. These I forget the time. I mean in English, the cheekbones. Yeah. 
there's yes. resonators here, and there's resonators there. So there's the yeah. high tones, middle tones, low tones. It's like a drum. Yeah. You know, you recognize that you know, um, as, as you, a drummer. You ask what the main causes are of, of notes. And yes. Generally, it's um. Well, first of all, not everybody will get notes. It doesn't mean that. Only the worst singers in the world get nodes and everybody else sings better. It doesn't mean that. Some people have more of a predisposition to be the type of tissue you have. But it also has a lot to do with what we're taking into our ears and what we're putting out in our throat. So yelling, of course, uh, pushing on the throat, pushing from the throat, which Marianne says she's diagnosed that. Um, singing or using the voice for long stretches of time, especially if you have a cold. You're under stress, you're tired. All of these things can give you nodes or not. Some people don't get nodes, but generally, nodes are calluses. And if you think about wearing a shoe that continually makes a certain amount of pressure in one place over a period of time, you'll get a callus. Older people know when, when people used to write with pencils in school, <laughs> something that doesn't happen anymore very much. They would get a note, a little callus on the finger where they would hold a pencil, and constantly using an area with more stress. It's a lack of balance. Uh, your your tone is throaty, so I would say you'd have to start um, lightening up. Sort of like I always think if you're talking to a beautiful little tiny animal or a baby, a child, you would be a little careful because you don't want to invade their little, you know, the beginnings of their lives. So you'd back off the Tony and say, Hi, how, what's your name? Be gentle. Be gentle, because that is not gentle. It's, it's, that could be, by the way, maybe one of your parents spoke like that, so it's imitative in most cases. <coughs> Quite often that's the case. Yeah. You also, uh, Jack said you were a drummer, is that right? Yes, yeah. Well, you took in quite a bit of sound that way too through your ears. Did you protect your ears when you were drumming? No, I did not. I don't know um, the profession of drumming much. I've been in the theater all of my life and I've been around drummers. But I don't know if you're holding your breath when you're drumming because that could be also stopping the airflow mm. in your throat. And it could put the focus in your body on your throat. Mm. We have a student who is a uh, professional pop singer. She sings mostly soul. And she works in a music school as well. She has some students there. And she went to a rehearsal to hear some people rehearsing one day. She sat in the back of the auditorium and listened to a rock rehearsal. And she didn't sing or say a word. It wasn't, you know, she just wanted to, to observe. And then she came out into the street and she called me half hysterical because she'd lost her voice. After three hours of listening to loud music, she couldn't talk. That's she hadn't connected. Made a sound. Ear, tone, is throat is connected completely. Mm -hmm. No ear, no tone. Yeah, deaf people. It's very difficult. And talk. Yeah, it's very difficult for. Them. Yeah, the um, the vocal cords take in everything. Unfortunately, we don't have ear lids. <laughs> So even though our brains will filter out the sound, the ears don't. You have really to use uh, earplugs. Mm. That could already start. The, the, the chords will react constantly to everything we're hearing. But the main thing about getting nodes is <clears throat> it's an injury. It's, a, it's the beginning of an injury somewhere, usually stress, singing when you're tired, using your voice when you're exhausted, when you're sick, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you for that. And then I guess the other um, kind of slight follow-on question is, do you have any best exercises or practice or even your, I guess, your opinions in terms of engaging mixed voice or what your thoughts are on mixed voice? I think I understand mixed voice, but I don't know. I know there are different terms in classical and pop and every field uses the terms differently. Mixed voice meaning chest head mix is that what you mean yes so in joining your your chest to your head voice so that kind of middle voice and the connection of your bridge where your transitions are happening <laughs> definitely but very um, simple very simple things in order to do that you have to back off the of the volume of the instrument mm -hmm. you back off until you find the 
see the tone is lies perpendicular in the body. Tone does not project. Tone is quiet. Yeah. It has to be balanced, and that's where you mix your registers within the tone. The words are the most important thing, and they're only delivered by the mouth. <coughs> the words are, they go outward. Tone does not go outward. So the tone, the first thing you have to balance is your tone. So yeah. you, that when you do a scale, everything follows through like any instrument. Yeah, everybody has chest, head, and mixed voice, mm -hmm. right? And there's a mixture that goes from pure chest voice, which is usually where we speak most of the time, although we use our mixed head voice when we talk. Sometimes we might say, hi, how are you? Hi, that's already mixed head. That would head. be a mixed head. Yeah, yeah. without even realizing we're doing that. Going from the bottom of the voice through the various resonators, we do that automatically if we back off the instrument. And the best way to learn to do that is with a closed mouth, with humming, very, very quietly. But it has to be very relaxed. That means no yeah. pressing, no mm, like this. Everything has to be through the ear. It's all listening in the end. You know, through the years of my analysis of all of this and <coughs> studying it, I paid attention to every emission of tone, even from dogs, mm -hmm. everything. When a person walks down the street humming a tune, it's 100% correct all the time. Unless they've had voice lessons. Unless they <laughs> but they, uh, no, they, then they're too conscious of it. Yeah, no, yeah, they're yeah. making their tone. You don't make your tone. Tone happens. When I read that, I wanted to throw all of the books that I was studying for years, I wanted to throw them out the window. Like, okay, come on now. Yeah, what does that How mean? does it just yeah. happen? Well, it does. Just like when we're talking. Behind my words is my tone. I'm not making that tone at all. And neither are any of you making no, your tone. Of course. That's natural. It's spontaneous. And that's what we have to consider. The best way to learn how to sing in your middle voice, uh, the middle voice is fundamental to everybody's instrument, is to to go gradually through your instrument very very quietly we can we could actually huh, it'd be interesting i don't know maybe we should wait till the end but we that it, that's a we can actually show you something very simple it's it's good for everyone whatever kind of music you sing mm -hmm. because it is fundamental to know your instrument and you can't know your instrument if you're missing notes or or you know, have to change from one to the next register. There, there, there are no. Well, it's sort I'm, of. I'm like, sorry, I shouldn't even using the term register. It's not even right. It's you know? it's immaterial what kind of music you do, because you could be a trumpeter and play who knows jazz, classical, mm -hmm. rock, whatever. Yeah. And as a singer, you can do any of these things too. Mm -hmm. But your instrument should be balanced. That's for your own health and longevity. Right. Do we have another question? We can talk about these exercises. Um, so just one other one, I guess. I should have mentioned probably at the start, I was probably slight fear not saying anything, but I, I am a voice coach as well. Um, and when I was talking about that mix, that's one of the main exercises I would do is, is like start with a humming exercise or even with like mouth closed and tongue out to relieve some of the tension up higher to help to engage more of that mixed voice and kind of get it to that balanced, controlled place. So it was just one... Mouth, yeah, so like... Mm -hmm. oh, no. oh no, you see, <laughs> Sorry. you see, your lips, you can't put tension, if you want free tone, you can't put tension, and by driving, okay. by using a muscle in the lips, that is very bad to do, it creates okay. in your tone, you have to do, mm -hmm. see your course. tone is, uh, as I said, it's, it really is, let me put it this way, if any of you whistle, you're following a tone in your mind, in your mind. Yeah. and that's exactly the same way you do it when you're singing. It's very, very light, very light. By yeah. doing that, it's harmful, very harmful. You yeah. can get nodes. It's dangerous. In fact, your it's tone dangerous. when you're talking yeah. is throaty, and I wouldn't. I, there's one of the reasons right there. I think that there are some fundamental truths, let's say, that we have to talk about with everyone singing, no matter what type of music we want to do. Okay, there might be styles of singing that could be considered harmful, and we've had questions like that from people who want to sing, I don't know, you know, growling and all these other things. Before we get to all that stuff, if we just want to talk about the general healthy use of, of the vocal instrument. I mean, <laughs> um, 
we're used to now in the voice world, in the world of vocal performance, delivering a song is very important. We're used to all this delivery, putting it out there, projecting to the back of the room, being loud. That's all everybody thinks about now is volume and making the voice happen, working on the voice from with the idea already of getting the results, which is why we see so many courses online and everywhere else where you can improve your voice in three hours or ten, ten lessons and all of it. It's nonsense. It's all nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. First of all, if your voice is healthy, there's nothing to improve. You know, It's just a question of learning how to sing a song. But if your voice is out of balance, then you have to balance it. Well, there's, um, and if you think of balance as three parts, if one yeah. of those is off, the other two will be off. Air tone word. The air yeah. can't be off. The tone will be off. If the tone is off, the air is automatically well, off. Well, the, the definition of tone is vibrated air. Yeah. So when does it stop vibrating and does it become tone? Yeah. <coughs> That's you right. You have to yeah. start like that. So you can actually do an exercise sort of like uh, gently blowing in this way. Did you hear how it enters? It enters just like a violinist who has to learn the pressure of the bow on the string because they work with friction also. You never would hit the bow, you get a terrible tone. Yeah. You have to find the, the orchestral musician or whatever, the violinist, has to make sure that that bowing arm is just touching and causing the friction to make the tone. It's the friction. It's the regular vibrations. Regular vibrations. Yeah, yeah. So that's very, I got chills even talking about that, so how <laughs> important it is. It really is super important. Um, in uh, it, I'm, I'm risking answering somebody else's question here in the process, but um, I was just thinking about, about the regular vibration. Eh. Oh, God, there's so many things to say. I don't know if I should say everything first or just let's go on. But let's go ahead. I did want to say one thing, though, about when you said about sticking the tongue out and you said that's in order to relax the tongue, the tongue has a, uh, has a position of relaxation by nature. That's where it's relaxed. Everything else is imposing a position on the tongue. We speak whatever language we learn when we're a child. We speak with no accent because our, we've learned the confirmation that's proper. When we're relaxed and the, and the mouth is closed, the teeth are separate, and we're breathing through our noses, and we're, you know... Do you know... Just, the, the tongue sits in its perfectly natural, relaxed yes. position. And do you know where it is? Do you know where the point of the tongue is? It's up here. It's here. In, behind the, the front teeth. The tip of the tongue is touching behind the front teeth. When the you're relaxed. is like in a nest like this. Mm -hmm. It sits at the top of the mouth, not at the bottom, not out. That doesn't relax the tongue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something now that we always say and everybody is shocked. There are no positions in singing. No positions. Any position is an imposition. There are no positions. There's no placement of the voice. That's well, wrong. It's a myth. On that note. And uh, opera singers are now ready to kill us, okay? But it's true. Well, today they are. I mean, they wouldn't be years ago because they were doing no. everything beautifully. Years ago. We lost it. We lost the art club. Um, there are no positions. It's, mm -hmm. it, you would not have a spontaneity. And art is spontaneous. Yeah. Yeah. The way to relax the voice is to be very relaxed and to put yourself into a very neutral frame of mind. Say, sitting in a comfortable chair with your head resting, you know, a nice soft chair, or lying down on your side. If you want to hum with your mouth closed, breathing through your nose naturally, nothing is put into any form mm -hmm. of position, and then dreaming a nice little melody and letting that melody come from your mind straight into your voice. Like this. Not... That's out of tune. No. That would be out of tune right away. That's not proper, and it doesn't teach us anything except how to force the voice. It's wrong. Well, going so back to the it's regular vibrations that you want. Regular vibrations yeah, those are healing. Yeah, are healing, and they are specific. Like four forty would be an A, <laughs> you know, and so forth. Yeah. But your regular vibrations are damaging, yeah. and it's always out of tune. Well, the thing is that if you choose to push your voice, you know, people make this choice. Then you're going to have to always push. That's the point. Yeah. So in, in terms of that ease, then, and like with working with vocal dynamics, so you know, like your dynamic range, what would you 
say that kind of um those dynamics that? are coming from that changes is that all just the diaphragm you mean no, loud and soft the vocal dynamics come from the words only the words i know that sounds the interesting. tone has yeah. no no dynamic except well it only has two two it's high and it's steep it has no forward tone does not have forward so it does not have a dynamic the dynamic is one next to nothing period but the word does have yeah. The, only the mouth cavity has dynamic. And do you know another interesting thing? The word lives in the mouth. The mouth only has one intonation in it. It's the tone that reflects the other intonations. Okay, this but is going to go let just, me, this let me, fascinating. This, <laughs> let's do this. Let's do this all together. I will show you, I will let you hear the intonation of my mouth by letting i'm gonna blow sort of lightly blow an ah like an exhalation now would you do the same thing and you'll see your pitch will be different but you can't change that pitch could i blow a little hard so i can hear it? that's it that's your intonation as an instrument. Like, let's say can everyone hear a, a violin is, is G, right? Well, can you hear? It's very, it was very audible. Yeah, let's you? do it for everybody. Let's hear okay. your intonations. Who's going to start? Well, we have to, they have to turn their sound on. Okay, they're turning, muting themselves. Okay, okay, turn your sounds on one by one. Let's hear. Yeah. I don't hear anybody Well, yet. no, wait a minute. Wait, because they're, they're muted, I think. And I can't see Jack. I know he's there somewhere. There you are. Jack, how about you do it? Yeah, you do it, Jack. <laughs> do an ah, though. Do it. Let's, ah. let's. Uh, that's like, right. Like, Go ahead. Go like, for it. Oh, man. Think a word. <sighs> Just blow a little. <sighs> so we can hear. Okay. Now, can you, what's the, what's the name of the drummer? Tiz. Tiz. Tim? Tiz. Tim, can you do yours? Because you will have a different intonation. Yes. You're not as low as he is. Do you know how much higher that is than Jack? Okay, Jack yes. is a bass. You're yeah. not. I believe you're probably a tenor. I think so. All right. Now let's hear I everybody so. else. You can actually <clears throat> hear, and that will never change. That's where all of your words will be resonating. And Go ahead, Elizabeth. Can't hear you. It's a bit maybe nearer the mic. Can't hear or see you. Don't know where you are. Yeah, we can't see you either. Wait, oh, there's Elizabeth. Okay. Oh, yes. Blow out first. <sighs> Let's try again, please. It. I can't. I can't hear it. Whisper a word like. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, Amen. Yes. Thank okay. you. That's good. That Do you know? Right. Well, I think we have the same type voice. I think Listen, so. I think we're so. on the same pitch. That's yeah, that's how so. you know that that you have a this, similar uh, instrument. And yeah. You cannot you cannot see me in the video? Yes. Yes, yes I can see. You see you we're now. also we're speaking on the same pitch, mm -hmm. different color than I do, and I don't mean skin color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a vocal color. It's a different color, but it's the same instrument as my instrument, so, you, and that's why we're on the same pitch when we're doing this. So I'll do my ah, uh, and then you blow an ah, uh, and okay. you'll see that they're the same pitch. Okay. Wait. Can hear it now. Yeah, very it's the similar. same pitch. You're yeah, forcing it a little bit, but it's the same it's, pitch. It's very similar. Same yeah. pitch. Yeah. So you're a dramatic soprano, in case you don't know it. Okay. <laughs> That's your classification. I've heard it all, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it could be. It could be. I mean, we haven't seen you know seen much of you, but I think so. Yeah. Often you will be mis mistaken because the uh, the voice of a dramatic soprano is heavy and it has a lot of chest in it. So some people would say, "Oh, mezzo soprano contralto." No, no, yeah, no. Exactly. Contralto is another animal. Yeah. Completely different. other animal. Um. Yeah, if you want to keep doing this, I don't want to. I don't want to mess up the schedule here with listening to everybody. West. No, I mean, uh, go ahead, Nikita. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I thought maybe you were a lyric soprano, but I think you're I probably think so. a lyric mezzo soprano. Yeah. yeah. How how tall are you, Nikita? 
I'm five three. Yeah, a little. I could tell. Yeah. yeah. Can, you do, can you do that again? <laughs> word, not. Let's say. Yeah, so, well, amen, I'm, I'm then. saying amen because it's the only word I think of in English that start. Yeah. Do it slowly, like. Can't hear I, I can't hear it a little bit more. Okay, I, I got that. Yeah. I didn't hear it at all. Yeah, I did. I didn't hear it. <laughs> it was around there. Can you do that again? Oh, man. I, I think it's on I can't the hear pitch. it. I can't hear it. No, it's not coming. It is not lighting up, so I'm not getting any sound. Can you okay. do it? weird. It's closer to. Yes. Say. I'm not sure if it's actually coming through my mic or not. That's there we go. great. Yeah. yeah, that is higher. No, I yeah. think that she is a soprano, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a... Oh, okay, know. Stephen? Hi. Hi. <laughs> so we're hearing your, your whisper before <laughs> you actually talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's a nice, yeah. large voice. Yeah. yeah, you could be a maybe a baritone. Yeah, a nice large voice. Oh. Or a very large tenor, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> but what's interesting about this, we can hear also, I see Courtney, right? Is that right? <clears throat> we yeah. can hear you too. What's interesting about this is not so much diagnosing what type of voice you have, although we can do that, but that we all have our own specific architecture. You know, that the mouth is definitely the shape that we have. And that is our private amplifier well yeah can, can we hear also there's a whole philosophy because people can hear it, it's your your body and your voice of course is related to gravity so people with heavier voices are usually slower acting than the lighter voices because they have less gravity exerting uh, their bodies on their bodies upon their bodies okay courtney courtney sorry i don't know if i'm saying that right yeah it's courtney okay it's a high it's, voice. I don't think it's yeah. high enough. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. a higher, higher yeah. instrument. Yeah. Higher instrument, yeah. Yeah. Higher and lighter voice. Yeah. <clears throat> this is very interesting. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> the the point being that we all have a specific structure and we can't change the pitch of the mouth. The reason we're even talking about this is because of the question that Tiz asked before, which is uh, where you get your dynamics from. Dynamics, of course, come through the music, the way we feel it, but the way we get louder or softer is with the mouth, with the speech, with words. And I noticed you asked about the diaphragm. The diaphragm has one job to do that's very specific. What happens when we use more energy, say if we want to shout at someone, it's, it's, not it's not the diaphragm. It's the muscles beneath it. Yeah. The diaphragm is always doing the same thing. But the, the diaphragm lower... is like a ticking clock. It never stops as long as we're alive. And it has no pressure on it. Yeah. It just is moving up and down all of our lives. Yeah. We basically take the same breath all the time. Yeah. But the lower, I don't know how to say ventre in, in uh, English. Belly. The belly lower abdom abdominal. Abdominals. Lower abdominal muscles are the ones that will kick in more when we are using more energy for our song. Or yelling. You know, or screaming, yeah, yelling. Definitely they work. And you can see that very easily in a baby. Yeah. You know, because they they know how to use their voices perfectly. <clears throat> you know, infants never lose their voices. What? People lose their minds, but infants don't lose their voices. And they just keep yelling. And you can watch their little bodies. They work perfectly, you know. When they go for their ultimate scream very high, their bodies will go, oh, yeah, like they go, this. They put so much energy. Yeah, and they, that's all the muscles, their legs get that stiffen everything. They put the energy, the energy down toward the floor, yeah, yeah, with their little legs stretching out, yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting. I've also heard you talk about how you can tell somebody's personality just from their voice as well. Yeah. So, well, yes. Well, I believe well, that it's you know. uh, <laughs> animal density per square meter uh, with the <laughs> gravity because you look at dogs. I mean, we're not animals. <laughs> you funny. go around a little dog and <laughs> well, I don't bark like that. <laughs> I'm too big a beast to bark like that one, you know. <laughs> it, it, that's what I mean, it is. It's if, gravity. You know, if you think about it, it's, it's very logical, isn't it? I mean, yeah. the violin doesn't sound like a cello for a reason. The body you know? type, yeah. The resonance. Yeah. yeah. And physique. the behavior depends on that, too, you know. The physique uh, has everything to do with what kind of voice you have, of course. 
It's All right, well, we, we should probably move on to That's the next thing. Yes. I just wanted to say one thing. I just said what Tiz was talking about with the humming is that because I had 20 lessons with you and um, I got tired of, you know, begin again, go back because when the humming, you know, when you do it in like where Lisa gave the example inside, and I would always hum, you know, so my warm up, I changed my warm up exercise for my lessons. I'd have a nice bath and a relax, make sure I was perfectly relaxed for the lesson. And then it all just followed through after that. So, uh, yeah, well, you're always going very deep inside yourself with the hum. And if you look at right. like mm -hmm. great singers like Ella Fitzgerald, before she even starts something, she's she's closing her eyes. She's listening, tuning, listening. tuning inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Singing is all about the ear. Yeah. It's, it's listening internally. It's listening. And the melody, the song, is in our subconscious mind. Mm. You don't have to make the notes. Well, that's where our feelings or are. Or hit the notes or reach the notes. Those are yeah. all wrong ideas that we all have. We've all had them. What we do is with our conscious mind, say our words. Then but our subconscious mind deals with the, with the uh, song. Yeah. Mm. Describe the your feelings with the words. Yeah. All right, so Stephen, describe your feelings yes. to us all. Your feelings, yeah. I have so <laughs> many. I have a lot of feelings. No. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. It's nice to meet you too. Um, hi. I'm just like Nikita. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. I was born here, but um, my parents were both born in Italy and they moved here when I was, well, when they were very young. Um, so Where I'm. Where in Italy are they from? So my dad's from Frosinone. Oh. And, and my mom's from Caserta. <laughs> Yeah, so the funny thing is, is I'm honestly a little nervous right now, but there's a part of the way that you two are just reminds me a lot of the people that I grew up with in my family. So I feel really comfortable in a way. So I want to thank you for that. <laughs> Well, my mom was in Naples or in Napolitana, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> My when Caserta, like where my mom's from, it's it, the cooking and stuff there is very inspired by it, and I grew up with a lot of good food. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so I've been um, kind of singing. Uh, I started singing professionally, I guess, when I was fifteen. That's when I had my first gig. I'm 29 now. Um, I have had a polyp that was operated on when I was 16. Um, I've had my tonsils taken out when I was 22 because I was getting tonsillitis all the time since I was a kid, just uh, things like that and acid reflux. Um, and uh, so I've been through a journey and I mainly do a lot of my singing on YouTube and that's been the case for the last three years or so. Um, I've accumulated an online audience of a fair number of subscribers um, to the point where I feel almost a sense of responsibility to not put super incorrect singing out there just um, <laughs> to the best of my ability. Yeah. Uh, no worries. Um, Fine. Yeah. And um, I guess I kind of do want to lead into my first question. Um, it's come kind of piggybacking off of something that Tiz had said about, um, about throatiness. Um, because I feel like for the last, I don't know, six months or so, that's kind of where my voice is. It feels like it, it feels very throaty when I'm singing for the last six months or so. Like and I don't, throaty. Oh, throaty, throaty or dirty, throaty, throaty. throaty. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know, it just kind of feels like for the last six months I've had, um, kind of issues with resonating and so it feels like it's just kind of living in my throat and to the point where when I'm singing or recording um I'll feel physical pain like under my jaw and in my neck muscles and I I don't feel like I've made any conscious changes to my technique in the last half a year or so um but I've I was diagnosed with extreme generalized anxiety when I was 11 years old and so I kind of want to know how mental health plays into how it can affect your voice and how it works and kind of how to deal with it. Anxiety will definitely affect your breathing. Yeah. Well, your speaking voice is extremely balanced. It's a good <laughs> voice, balanced. yeah. But oh, thank you. Do you ever notice if you are holding your breath, it, not talking about singing, but in general, in your life, <laughs> do you catch yourself holding your breath? Yeah, sometimes I'll catch myself holding my breath or if I 
if I'm extra mindful of it, I'll feel a, a lot of um, tension under my jaw. Like it feels like I'm clenching, but I don't realize I am until someone calls it out. Right, 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 right. Yeah, jaw tension is is a primary source of throat tension. You can't really have a relaxed throat if your jaws are tight. You know, your throat. You can't open your throat. This idea of opening the throat by doing something physical is another nonsense, along with the straw and a few other things. Uh, but you can have a, an open throat by having a relaxed jaw. You can relax it just by dropping like like a dummy. You know, when you see a dumb person like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> just do that for a while. That relaxes this joint yeah. here. Actually, a wonderful... Then, then you have to see, are your teeth aligned properly? Because if you have imbalances in your in your teeth. In biting. Biting, actually. in your bite. You have to examine your bite. Well, then that can be worked on by a dentist who understands balance. Yeah, although his speaking voice you know, is so good. It's your speaking voice is perfect. You know, I Thank wanted, you. We were talking before about humming with Tizen, and this, this applies to what you said, too. About I was talking about how you uh, can do a very simple exercise to blend your voice, so to speak, by putting yourself into a very relaxed position and taking up the sort of the attitude of a person who's falling asleep on a on a bus, you know, like this. <laughs> you know? This joint, relax, open, just that has to drop. Uh -huh. So if you start drooling, that's a good sign, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it means you're doing it right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you can check if, you're, if your jaw is nice and relaxed, if you just, it's not a question of dropping or opening like, but just a normal little relaxed drop and see if you can get one finger between your front teeth. Yeah. And in that position, you can feel, just without doing anything, this is a, it's a non-position in other words, you can feel the air going in and out of your mouth. It's very pleasant. Yeah. This nice, pleasant feeling of the air going. Yeah, that's beautiful, in. Deborah. I can wow. see you doing that. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's how children exactly learn. Right. If you look yeah. in a children class of children, when we, when we, have, this is Deborah, where, when we're talking, open. You're talking to Elizabeth? Uh, no, yeah. I know that she was in a beautiful position. Yes, just, yes. It's completely open. Yes, yes. That's, that's an exchange of energy we're, we're <coughs> earning and we're giving uh -huh. we're taking and giving at that moment if, when this seal, seals here and we're yeah you know we're not giving and we're not getting anymore if you go from that non-position right then just relaxed to just closing the mouth naturally in other words don't tighten up here. yeah don't don't close the teeth just the mouth yeah. leaving the teeth open and the tongue goes into its natural relaxed place, which is the tip touching behind the teeth. The upper teeth. And then you're breathing now through your nose. And you would say something simple like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's you beautiful. See? That's very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. That's mm -hmm. exactly how the voice should go. It's it's a spontaneous reaction. Voyons café? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, and that would be now. You wouldn't do, you know. Would you like a coffee? Mm hmm. No, you would do that. Why would you do that? You know. Yeah. yeah. That's and that's not musical. Apart from anything, no. you know. Yeah. So, are there any other questions? How are we doing time wise, Jack? Are we, are we okay? Shall oh, we we're doing well. Yes, we're right on track. Did we answer? We didn't answer everything. Maybe that you asked. Um, you were talking about the anxiety, and then about. What, what was the other part of your question? Uh, the other part was just mainly about um, feeling very throaty because for the last six or so months, just because I feel like there's a lack of resonance that's happening all of a sudden when I sing, and I don't know how I'm differentiating my talking from my singing. Oh, uh, well, that's uh, a very good question. Let me just say that's that. That's a very good question. The definition here is really interesting. The only difference between singing and speaking i mean you know, the, yeah. it's legato yeah. so yeah. i would say try and fool yourself so right now am i speaking or am i singing am i speaking or am i singing that's a legato am i speaking or am i singing am i speaking or am i singing it's legato yeah you get a melody under there and you go with it mm -hmm. do you want to okay. try that yeah uh right. sure well try and fool yourself are you speaking or singing uh Am I speaking or singing? 
That's like Gotham. Am I speaking or singing? Yeah. Am I speaking? Am I, or am I speaking or am I singing? There you go. That's, that's, right. your, that's it. There's no other choice there. That's the yeah. that's your resonance, all right. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank if you. you. Have if a question thinking. from uh, Courtney. Is that your name? Do you have a question? She can't see where you're looking. Oh, okay. So all right. <laughs> <laughs> is it my turn or did you just see me move my hand? Because I went like this. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were asking. Information is, <laughs> sorry, no. Okay. I'm just emoting. <laughs> good, good. Um, yeah. Um, the, if you feel at any time that the voice is throaty, and in your case, you're probably sensitive to it because your speaking voice is really well balanced, it's probably because you're getting away from your speaking voice. So start everything from your speech. Very simply. Speaking and singing are identical. They really are. And half of the work, 50% of the work, is the speaking voice. Well, try a phrase. What do you, or If you're working on something now, just sing one phrase. We can tell right away. We'll help you right away. Any piece of music you want, like, say, tell us the words to a, a song. The first something you're working yeah. on that you enjoy. Just anything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, another summer day has come and gone away in Paris and Rome. But I want to go home. Okay. Okay. I would say right away that uh, largely today in today's, you know, singing world, you can't, we confuse the verbal line with the tonal line. Hmm. That must never be confused. The tonal yeah. line is, is almost hidden. It's in the hum. So with this melody, that's where you are. Hum that line. Just hum that. Don't do any words. Hum your line. But no, no you're, you're, you're still, the speaking is behind it. Yeah. A hum doesn't accent. Like, that's like somebody trying not to speak. Right. As if yeah. you hardly, if, as, like you're dreaming it. Yeah. Dream your way through it. Okay. That's right. That's the hum. And that represents your feelings. And it's kind of looks a little bit uh, sad in a way. It's kind of uh, a little melancholy. Melancholy. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. It's melancholy. Your words are not connected to that. What you just done now has is only high in the head and deep in the chest. It does not carry. You can hear it if you're close to you, but if you're in a distance, you'll hear something, but you won't hear it. It doesn't carry. It's only two-dimensional. Then the words are used to explain that, but they don't mix with it because then you won't have the proper projection if you mix it. Right. The thing, same, it's, it's, that's, that's good, you know. Yeah, that's, try. Now, if you would say the words, you said, with your normal speech, another summer's day. Another summer day has come and gone away. Okay. okay, that's, now that's what voice. we have to hear when you're humming. Mm -hmm, another mm -hmm. summer day. We have to hear the word. The word is the main thing. Right. So see if you could combine that without you, mixing the two. I also have another request, and this is for everyone. Could you do those notes and those words without any style inflection? Like, teach it to me. For instance, if you're going to sing... Happy birthday to you, like a little kid. Happy birthday to you. No pop, no classical inflection, just neutral. Do you think you can do that? <laughs> try it, try it. So this, the melody is do the hum again without any inflection. Okay. For happy birthday or for just? Well, do it for happy birthday. Try happy birthday. Birthday. Okay. So happy birthday hum? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Now the words are happy birthday to spoken, right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, right? Yeah. Okay, so talk your way through that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Okay. Now put it together. Now let the melody come to you. Um, no humming, like actually. Happy yeah. birthday to you. Happy Real birthday simple. to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday uh, to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Voila. Happy... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's actually very beautiful. That's it. You know, uh, it's here, quality instrument. Here is the Thank thing. You. Whatever style we want to sing in, it can't invade our balance. You can sing jazz or pop or classical. It doesn't matter. I'm a piano player. You know, it doesn't matter what style I play. I don't change my technique. Yeah, this is yeah. a basic technique because if they mix up and what you did before, you get pulling in your throat, you get pulling elsewhere because this is, if what we're talking about is is scientific, it's physiological, yeah, and it's acoustical yeah, at the same time. So, you know, that, that has to jive together to have clarity and ease. If the acoustic goes off and you're starting to physically push here or there, yeah. It's yeah. going to be difficult to handle. You can do other people's styles, but you shouldn't allow their defects to become yours. There's a yeah. difference. You can't imitate quality. So you mm. can imitate a person's style, but you can't imitate their defects. You can't imitate anything but defects. Yeah. I mean, Stevie Wonder, who is, you know, geniale, he's a brilliant musician and all of that. He's full of his own defects. Now there's a Stevie Wonder technique. People are, are trying to sound like well, it's, him. Why? It's based on the defects. It's based you on can't the defects. Be him. Why would you want? You couldn't possibly sound like him. Right. When I see yeah. little children, and I, I see, saw a little boy the other day on camera, you know, and his his face was like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a scream. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a scream. Yeah. You could see it. But mm. that's a good point, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, it, that, exactly that. He, yeah. That's what the little is doing. He's he's imitating an adult, of course. Yeah. You know, and we we do the same thing. We're grown ups, and we still do it. You know, we it's hard, still right? hard. But also, yeah. Adele, Adele got the singing problems because she was trying to imitate. A she wanted a black sound. She well, she, a black American. She and she has Mississippi Delta. And yeah. She has a heavy yeah. voice. She has <laughs> a heavy voice. It's a it's a beautiful <laughs> instrument that she has. Yeah. She should have let that. She shouldn't have done she that. She should have left it alone. Left yeah. it alone. Yeah. You could do a style. You could do a black style if you want to do it, but you yeah. don't because you don't have the bone structure. Well, you don't have the sinus cavity. Well, it doesn't even matter. You can't imitate another singer. It doesn't no. matter what color. No, you have to be yeah. yourself. But that's where her. It was a very small error. She could have been corrected in an instant. She never called us, by the way. No, but yeah. she could have been corrected other in an instant. Other people did. Other famous her, people even. did. Other people and, yeah. did. But they, I, I think some people are trying to get her or to. Take, take Julie Andrews, for instance. She was in trouble as she got older. and She never really found her voice well. She didn't imitate, though. But. She didn't imitate, but she was screwed up. Anyway, I saw a video of her when she was very young. And I thought, oh, my God. That's a contralto. She was a baby contralto mm -hmm. that was never recognized because contraltos, when they're small, have very high voices often. And they took her for a high soprano and they put her in roles that were not for her. She was not that type of a person because with the voice, there's gravity. A heavier voice has more gravity pull on it than a lighter voice. You know, it's all, uh, it's not only you know, oh, I like this, I like... No, 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 no. It's, it's well, because she physical. started as a child, she just continued in that yeah. repertoire. And she lost but, her way because yeah. she wasn't observing she did, her nature. She did injure herself, and sadly, the surgery she had ruined her voice. That's extremely sad, you know. I but think, in uh, any case, uh, talking about people like, like you said, Adele before Jack, or anyone, anyone who wants to sing in a style of music, first of all, has to understand the style very well. And secondly, they still have to sound like themselves. That's right. You Otherwise, there's no message there. You can't add something that's not your nature. Yeah. She had a, a beautiful instrument, as mm -hmm. it is. It's a beautiful instrument. Yeah, really and she should have just been herself and not imitate a sound that she might have liked from somebody else. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, let's hear from Courtney. And Courtney, be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can be. Trust me. I've tried. Right. How are you guys? <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to meet you. I'm so excited to be here. This is mind-blowing information. Um, I'm loving it. So I did have a question that I wanted to bring up at the end of my time, but um, I thought maybe I could just tell you about my history with vocal trauma. Because sure. um, I do believe I have a bit of a unique scenario. And if I'm wrong, please tell me, because I would love to not be alone in it. <laughs> okay. Also... 
I'm glad that Stephen mentioned, asked, asked about the um, effects of anxiety on vocal because I also have GAD, pretty huh. aggressive GAD. And that's something that I try to educate myself on a lot because, you know, obviously it affects your control and breath and everything. Anyways, um, I've also got a touch of ADHD. So if I get sidetracked, let me know. It's fine. It's just, fine. just for me, because I, I left America many, many years ago, and I don't know what GAD signifies. Oh, generalized anxiety disorder. Basically, everything freaks me out. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, all right. All right. Yeah. And, and I had a coffee, so this is great. Um, okay. So um, I'm really bad at condensing stories, but basically what happened with me is from, okay, this is a long story short. From when I was five years old until they finally solved it at 19, um, I had a mass growing in my trachea. Oh, good so, pardon me? That's, that's, yeah, that's something. What did they, did they find out? Was it congenital? Was you born with it? No. Okay. So um, there's a history of uh, th not thyroid problems, but a lump in the thyroid. And uh, my mother has it. And my grandmother also had a problem with her thyroid. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was five, they removed half of my thyroid right. and then it tried to regrow in my trachea yes, <laughs> it's yes. insane and so they didn't know until I was 11 and I started having like breathing issues and like having to hack up to breathe and they said that I had asthma and they said that I couldn't sleep with my cat anymore and they said that I was trying to get out of PE and all this stuff happened and all the while my whole life I've been singing and also an athlete I work with horses um mm -hmm. which was Interesting when you guys started referencing horses at the end of the podcast with Jack. Um, I totally related to that. Anyways, so my whole life, I've been singing and exercising and having to push really hard to get airflow out because by the time I was 19 and they finally did the last operation, um, I only had four millimeters to breathe through. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. And I just I sang the whole time anyways. And I don't know what um, Jack found of me on YouTube to send you guys, but it may have been something from before I had that operation. So you may have heard me sing with a very narrow airway. It, um, the piece that we hmm? have is you singing in a stairwell yeah. on Facebook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, that's new. <laughs> anyways, um, so then when I was so I'm 27 now, I've been doing music. Um, Full time, it, I work with event bands. Um, so much like Nikita, I'm I'm singing for four hours in a row with 15 minute breaks um, uh, in bars and in um, event rooms, and I'm having to do very vocally demanding music pieces. Um, and I've, this, I kind of got thrown into that job, and I'm very grateful. I love it. But before that, I was hosting karaoke, and I was singing once an hour. And now I'm singing all the time. And I didn't know for the last four years that I was singing wrong because the only way that I know how to speak and sing is by pushing so hard. And so I've seen some vocal coaches and I saw a speech pathologist who is lovely and helped me a lot. Um, but now I'm having to try and just relearn how to speak and sing. And with my ADHD and anxiety, I, I never come up for air. <laughs> mm -hmm. I try, but it's a really, I have to think very hard about controlling my breath while I'm speaking and singing. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how to relax my throat. I can't feel it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure that if I figured it out, I could have like a beautiful vibrato, but I have absolutely no idea how to even access it. Well, let's talk yeah, about okay. this a second, because I feel that you're not in your tonal center. No. Your voice is lower. Yes, it's it not that lower. high. Yeah. You haven't, you haven't no lower resonances, no proper lower resonances. It's nothing. Yeah. No. Um, how, how tall are you, Courtney? I'm about five, six, maybe a little lower. Yeah. 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 And, and it's interesting when I'm singing too, up, I can go like, and probably not accurately but like up is no problem but i have no lower register at all i'm often having to put songs up it's clear. Your pitch i don't your... i don't know how to move it down right. all right. right where your pitch of your your tone when you're speaking is too high for your body type you could, have to could it you, has to be lower could you whisper so, again one time can we hear the whisper one time again just the you know, amen yeah you can do amen or you could just you can talk to us a minute by whispering yeah keep your yeah. mic close to you and say you continue to talk to us i thought you see how low that is? Wait, we can kind of hear it a minute. Yeah, Sorry. okay. I didn't hear anything. Okay, hi, I'm whispering. I thought whispering was bad for you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Fine. That's fine. That's your your whisper is a great deal lower than your tone, and yeah. that's where your voice is. Is where your whisper is. You can see by looking so at the you can do a, throat too. You've got a lower voice. You can do an exercise like this. I don't know if you'll hear this, but it would be like. <sighs> You're going down. Yeah, I'm You're just well. I went on the same pitch there, but I was just exhaling without making tone. Perhaps it, she might find without it, making tone. Yeah, looking. For See the, how that works. Like, for instance, if you're out of breath. Yeah. For instance, if you're running. Yeah, you're running, okay. or you're walking up every moment of my life. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, are you running around after horses because that's really tiring? <laughs> Regularly, actually, but I'm just always out of breath because I don't breathe while I'm speaking, and I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> try, try this. Try what Marina said, but try first. Im imagine yourself or like simulate running and you're doing this and then see if a sound can appear pop now, out wait. spontaneously okay, let it just pop yeah. out not like this okay i'm going to show you what would be wrong which would be that would be wrong i'm making that sound okay let's try this okay. like, like extreme fatigue i'm tired extreme fatigue Okay. See if you can do <laughs> like that and slow down your breathing like this. <sighs> and then wait for it to kind of vocalize. And just yeah, yeah. see if yeah, it see if it will. Okay, don't make okay. it or anything. Don't do it very long. Let's see. Whoops, you're gone. Okay. Where did you go? um, Come back. okay, wait. Did okay. I do it? Did I do it? Because I didn't see any sound. No. That's another thing I find is that when I go to make sound, sometimes the air comes through before the voice cuts in. That's perfectly all right. Okay, don't worry about that. That's not a problem. Air is tone. Okay. So try again? Yeah. Yeah. Do it like this. <sighs> like somebody would say, you're oh brother. Tired. Yeah. You're very alert and active and ready. You're really, you know, <laughs> very, very I am. lot of energy. You have to get get more relaxed. I mean, and just like, oh if, my god! If we would work <sighs> with you, we would show you this with, with a lot of calm. Right now, we're trying to do something in a hurry because we have other people to talk to. But just to see if if this might be an interesting little would, trick for it you. It would be like getting into a framework of extreme fatigue. I lost my audio. Sorry. Can you hang on? Uh, are you there now? Can you hear? Let's see. <clears throat> Not yet. Not yet. No? No? Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did that happen? What happened? Come back. No. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly you, fine. You, yes. Okay. You got Maybe it? it's my headphones. Mm. I don't know. But just, yeah, maybe meditation would also help. It just goes to show how much the mind affects the Absolutely. singing yeah. voice. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we would have a few. Meditation. I mean, singing mm. is meditative. You're way inside yourself when yeah. you're singing, you know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Deep, deep down. Meditation with no vocal sounds, no prana, yoga, things like that. No. Yeah. Mm. Do Mariana told me many times just just to, to sing in the way that I am when I write a song. So I'm very... Right. Oh, I can hear you again. Okay. Okay. okay what, what I would like you to do is a tone of exhaustion. Now you have loads of energy and you keep yourself really high like that. Always, a, you're living on a high. Let's, let's just break that down a little bit. And when you're really exhausted, which you probably never are because you're full of energy, but you probably are tired and don't even know it half the time when you are. Well, if you're running on targets, so let's you know, say if you go like this, <sighs> well, from oh the, my god, yeah, from, <sighs> from <sighs> the breath, the uh, yeah, the breathlessness of running first, the breathlessness yeah. of running, yeah, <sighs> okay, okay, yo, try this again, and you're running, and there's let, let some a tone appear, don't make a tone, okay, okay, okay. <sighs> do, okay, do, wait, first do, of all, do though. first like this. <sighs> wait a second. And wait, see wait, what wait. tone comes out. Oh, okay. Uh, you have to relax your jaw, though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you... Let's see if we can, you can do this. We don't have to look at you. I don't know. You're sitting at a desk or something there? Do you have a... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
can you lean forward at, on the desk like this? Can you see me? Like this. Mm -hmm. Rest mm -hmm. your head on your hand. Not your cheek. Okay, your head, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to bend a little more forward, so you might have to back your chair up so you can really rest your head in this way. Am I doing it? That's good. That's good. Now, open your mouth slightly and see if you can just make friends with gravity a minute <laughs> and let your jaw relax. Let it hang. Uh-huh. That's not bad. That's quite good. Now, in that position, just relax. Breathe in and out naturally through the mouth. Can you feel a nice flowing of air going in and out of the mouth? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have to be deep breath. It's just natural. Okay. Deep breathing is not necessary. We don't have okay. to take breath. Okay. That would be wrong anyway. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something just like that. And I think I probably asked Jack to do it once. Close your mouth and think of something that smells really good. I don't know, chocolate. Pizza? Pizza, yeah. Hay. It's hay. <laughs> hay is good. I was going to say gardenia, but hay is fine, too. <laughs> I prefer gardenia, but gardenia, anyway. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, really cut grass is very nice, too. That's nice, too. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay, so you've got the mouth closed. You're thinking of something really nice that smells really good. Now, you're going to smell that like this. <sighs> Do that again. That's pretty good. Stop a minute. Don't do it again. Wait a minute. Give yourself about three beats <laughs> and do it again. <sighs> Something smells good. So you take it in through your nose because it's delicious and then you let go of it right away. Okay. You look, you look very nice like that. How does that feel? Uh, I don't know. Normal? Like, I'm, I, I don't know how to answer. You don't know how to do it? Yeah, I know. Think about this. This is, let's say, the shortest breathing exercise we could possibly come up with. We don't do breathing exercises. But if you need to relax a minute and you feel like you need to take a breath, taking a breath will never get there. You can't take a breath. We suck ourselves out. We don't get a breath. And anyway, you don't need a deep breath. But what we do need, though, is to breathe in something good. This is looking already much better because your mind is getting less active. Yeah. So you walk into <laughs> a paddock and there's this wonderful hay there. Or we step into a... Speak in my language. Yeah. There. Okay. Listen where your voice, yeah. your voice dropped. That's where yeah. you have to go. This is delicious hay. Ah, oh, It's a beautiful morning. The sun is shining, uh, and you breathe in that beautiful morning air yeah. through your nose. You smell it. <laughs> and Sorry. Okay? And immediately let it out. Immediately let it out. Don't hold your breath. Good. It looks good. Oh. That's very good. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this exercise is good for everyone, by the way. We can always imagine whatever smell we like the best, you know, baking bread, whatever it is. But if you take, a, if you take in the smell with your nose, you will never take a wrong breath. Because you're not thinking about take a breath. You're thinking about that wonderful thing you like. The sea, at, you know, the sea, the morning air at the sea. You go to the... Chocolate You're cake, in the mountains. A cake? Baking? <laughs> Whatever it is. Do that. Do it to your... You do about three times and you've done a breathing exercise. Okay, but rest your head when you're doing it this way. So that you also... Have, or you can take a chair and lean on it like that. So that you allow gravity to help your face relax. And it will also relax your neck, what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because we, it's hard to hold our head up all the time. We're, we two-legged animals have it, have it difficulty. You know? Heads are heavy. Yeah, heads are very heavy. So you rest your head. You think about something that smells really good. And we all do that, don't we? We take in the delicious smell and instantly go, ah, afterwards. Okay, that's important. 
Now, when you get to that point, we can already hear a slight difference in the throat. Yeah, just like the that. tone has dropped. A, it dropped it needs just to drop a little bit. Some more, but yeah. it's dropped. And oh my gosh, I'm like Julie Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You have you have immense energy, but you have yeah. to have some for yourself. <laughs> and I think that you're spread out too much everywhere. Yeah. And you really have to get down and went to yourself much more. I think this. I think could for be fixed, your absolutely. for your health, yeah, it's yeah. important for your health. I, this is this is very easy to fix. Actually, you just need a little need to do a little work on it. It wouldn't be hard yeah. to do. I would say the the key would be to do as little as possible. Now, you're highly energetic, so you do too much. You're running yourself ragged, and you know you're always uh -huh. like you're ready. You're ready. So I, I would imagine a teacher in school would always call on you because you'd be right there, <laughs> ready. Yeah, but if you she know. has anxiety, that would be a very bad thing for However, her. However, if you <laughs> work with horses, you, know, you see yeah. how each horse is within themselves. Yeah. They have their own energy. Mm -hmm. They're in themselves. Right. Your energy is not in you. Yeah. You know, you have to be much more introspective. Think about Think about more internally the things that are going on inside of you and how you feel about things. Well, think of the horse whisperer of the film, how he talks to the horses and it's very... All right. Yeah. No. It doesn't it just whispers way, I, I, to the horses. I exercise uh, for anxiety, for breathing and anxiety uh, in general, for when you have to go on stage or perform. Yeah. If you, I'm going to take my glasses off now, which means I won't see any of you, but I'm going to show you. <clears throat> take the heels of your hands and put them over your eyes like that. And then do this, okay? If you wear lenses, be careful. Yes, don't press on your. Obviously, you know what you're doing. Don't press on your so, eyes with yeah, lenses. Yeah, you know, obviously. Then, while you're holding your heels and the hands over your eyes, you do this. Rhythmically, according to your own rhythm, of course. I'm doing mine. This doesn't mean to take a deep breath. No. Not that way, but just little shallow puffs. And as when you puff out, yeah. notice how the air comes back into your mouth. Try it once, Courtney. See how that feels. Your... Could you just explain it one more time? I got a little bit in my head for a second. Okay, okay. okay. I'm going to explain it again. So you, you, when you cover your hands, you, your eyes with your hands, you don't have to now if you don't want to. You can look at me. Okay. Okay. You're going to be taking, like you're going to try to blow out a little candle like this. So it's just a very gentle puff. You keep puffing. And after the puff, notice how the air comes back to you. Very slowly. Very, yeah. yeah don't Gen let gently. It, gently, that's correct. Don't let it come in. Don't take breath, in other words. Don't, no, but just. At your rhythm, you can. At go your own rhythm, yeah. Whatever. I'm doing it. I think probably too fast for yeah, you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm a I'm a smaller, faster person. How tall are you? I'm five foot three. And I, I can see, right? I can see your bones are bigger than mine. So just think, sort of like if I would do it with a if I would say something, I would say. Su. Su. So, so you can hear the so. No noise comes out of me. So. 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 Now without sound. So. 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 And if you cover your eyes at the same time with the balls of your hand like that. So. So. Am I doing it? That's right. Good. That's right. Good, 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 good. That feels good. Very good. Very, you, very you good. You need that. You need that. Very good. So is this my new vocal warm up? <laughs> it's not a vocal yes. warm up. Do that. You could do that. <laughs> you know, we don't warm up voices. We organize them so I'm... they're always ready. You know. You don't need warming up. That's you need bringing brilliant. down. Yeah. It's bringing down. It's bringing down. Yeah, and it's very good for any form of nervousness. If you have to go, I don't know, talk to your mother or <laughs> something that makes you nervous, whatever it is, <laughs> you do that first. You sit in your car or you sit wherever you are. Do that a little bit. 
I want to ask you, yes. do you work out? Well, she's she's working with horses, right? <laughs> well, no, no, I I beat on myself a lot because I should be more active. I'm I'm like known for not riding for months and then going and putting a jump school on a horse. Oh, we don't do any. But um, I I, I've. I don't, I'm not sure if I saw a bicep or something. I don't think you do. do, you do sure. Oh, well, due to the pandemic, I'm back in construction. So I lift five gallons of paint all the time. I'm, I'm physically capable, but I don't actively do much except well, for a little bit of yoga. I want to say something about that. While you're do lifting, whether you're working out or, or in the work, you have to release your air every time you're lifting because you don't close the throat. When you lift... Breathe out. Breathe you out. have to exhale. It will help you lift. Yes. I'm and quite sure I normally hold my breath when I do that. So yeah. Oh, sorry. That's why I'm telling you that because that's yeah. one of the, one of the um, uh, origins of the closed throat because that's what you have, a closed throat because of your, yeah. in, in this case, because of your work. So you have to make sure that your passageway here, you'll have more strength if you breathe out. Yeah, because and if you block be and your throat will be more relaxed, because if you close your throat and you're lifting, forget it. Yeah, it's very bad. For it's the injurious. Very bad for the throat. I guess we have to go ahead. Yeah, we should probably move on to our last singer here. It's, it's, see the, the the dynamics of the psychology of the singing and the teaching. Also, the way Mariana I know usually teaches the male singers, and you can see yeah. the way Lisa's more engaging with the female singers. Yeah, yeah. I have a way with men, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and our last singer, Elizabeth, is uh, from Paris. Mar Mariana has low notes, too, so she can sing with I men. I have low notes, <laughs> and I'm, I'm rather tall, you know, so, you know. So, all right. Where they're, are they're you? Oh, there you are, they're Elizabeth. frightened of me. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so I I actually saw you in, a, in an article at some point last year or something. And I was, uh, since I was trying to dig to see exactly my problems. So I just came across this article and was like, wow, this is, this is nice. This is different. Uh, but um, I, I thought, no, I can't go to Italy and be there. So I'm happy to see you today. Um, okay, so uh, I had, um, in the beginning of my singing, when I was about 20, 25 maybe, I, um, I had a problem, like a vocal problem, meaning that when I was singing, um, at some point, like I could sing two songs and then everything was collapsed. What kind of music were you singing? Excuse me? What, what was the type of music you were singing? Oh, I sing jazz. Oh, jazz, okay. So I went to see, and I had this thing, you know, uh, somebody said, oh, you have to go and see this doctor, uh, Gorokov, who was a professor in Paris. So I went, and then uh, he analyzed, like uh, he sent me to the lab, and uh, I had a staphylococcus. Oh, all right. And I was lucky because I was blessed because I went to see a doctor in time. And then I never had any problems. I could do anything with, anything with my voice, yeah. never had a polyp or anything. Mm -hmm. Then uh, five years ago, uh, the problem started. So one day I woke up and I couldn't reach a certain note, like where my Actually, where my passage is, yeah. I couldn't reach this. And I was like, what's going on? You know, it was like, and then it went on and on and on. And, and finally, I saw a lot of doctors. And I saw like the ones that you can say uh, could really uh, put a diagnose on my thing, but they didn't know. I had nothing here. Right. here it was healthy. It was... Yeah. The good humidity thing. It was everything was okay. Mm -hmm. But and they said, no, you have nothing. And I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do have something. So this went on for so I took all kinds of stuff and I went to see all kind of speech therapists. And some had me to blow in the, the straw. You know, the straw and all this. Okay. 
nothing, you know. And then my last concert was in uh, 2019. Uh, and I, a friend of mine said, hey, come and, and do this. It was actually in Canada. It was in Montreal. Uh-huh. And I said, you know, my voice is messed up. I don't know. She said, yeah, go. And I went and it was horrible. Like, I was like, ah, I was like, whoa, okay. But then I was diagnosed with uh, spasmodic uh, dysphonia. Yes. And so this was, for me, came as a shock, like death, you know, something like that. And I was like, okay, what am I? going to do now so I started to be treated by this woman so she does some injections Mm -hmm. and I have also a neurologist who is giving me uh, pills three times a day so I I did everything I I saw I I went to magic yes in Brazil I went to Africa some magic (laughs) in Africa I went to all those potions and I went to uh hypnosis actually which was really good for me i went to meditation i went to fasting um i'm kind of healthy with my food you know i i i don't eat meat i'm like you know i'm trying to do the best with everything excuse me for interrupting during yes. hypnosis um, during, during hypnosis mm-hmm. to say that you were okay. sort of removed from yourself yeah you okay, decide. I just wanted to know that. Yes, yes. And I am easy in a trance, easily. Yes. I yeah. can get in it, especially when I sing. Yeah. So um, the thing is, I've been singing two different types. I've been singing like more like the <laughs> kind of, you know, the little people of the forest in Africa. Mm-hmm. They call pygmies, but in fact, it's the little people. So I can produce a sound like this. And a sound like this doesn't. It's not an effort for me. It's it's okay. But the effort is more into the beauty. You know where you go in the... Yes, you want to spin a tone. In this soft... The thing you were talking about, the yeah. cello, the cello thing. Ella, you know, like this beautiful... And you feel the air. It's just a, a blow like this. It's so beautiful. Yeah. So I want to do this. I don't just want to do like that. Hey... Yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is okay, but this is not what I want to do. So oh, that before would be you got the, that would be throaty. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you got the diagnosis of the spasmodic dysphonia, were you able to spin tones like that? Was it easy for you? In, in before you the before this onset of the problem. Before I was sick. Uh, before I was sick. Yeah. Was it easy for you to do that? Yeah. Did, yeah. Anything was easy for me. Anything I could. Just oh, I, whatever. I and when I started to get limited, mm-hmm. then I didn't know what was going on. But one day I went to see my doctor. Um, uh, and, and then he told me, he said, um, he looked, everything was fine. And I'm like, now my voice is shaking. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So that, uh, 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And not, not... Oh, yeah. And also my son told me one day when I was singing, like maybe three years ago, he said, your, your, your vibrato changed. It is slower. It is like more like, oh, 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 oh. you know, like this. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I know. Isn't it weird? And then after that, like uh, a year ago, my voice started to to have some kind of a tremor to it. So that was that. So my question is, what the F is that? Am I ever going to sing again? Well, let me, allow me to, well, you want to ask a question before I say it? Yes, I think you probably, I know. I just want to say the the recording that we saw of you that that you sent, that's from about eight years ago or so. Is that right? I don't know. uh, But you weren't sick then, or you, you were not sick yet when you made that recording? I'm going to I'm going to tell you something I I think that what I have came about 2012 it actually came before long time ago uh-huh. because I remember that I I had I was compensating for you know That's so right. I think it's yeah. it was there for a while 
All right, that's what I was going to ask. Go ahead. You, you what were you going to ask? No, if she was compensating at the time when on the recording that we saw. If she was what, compensating, compensating for yes. the dysphonia. Well, yeah. the basic problem is the breath. Yeah. The breath and the, the organs, the, the breathing organs, they have to be, it has to be a, a easier distribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reaction, because you block it. You block it. Blocking the, I have a question about the dysphonia, the way, the diagnosis is it in one vocal cord, both vocal cords? No, it's both. Both. And when you have the dysphonia, do they lock? Uh, is that happen? Uh, uh, abductor, I think. Yeah, oh, the yeah. abductor. Okay, all right. Okay, so also the problem that I had, because he, now you hear my voice, it's okay. I can't talk. But then at some point, I couldn't even talk. And it, when it was, it, I was talking like this, and there was some air coming out, like sometimes, like... Yeah. You're closing. You're okay. closing down. Well, yeah. we we know that the spasmodic dysphonia. There's no exact cure, but there are many things you can do. I know you're already having. Are you having Botox injection? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I have this, those pills that I don't know what it does, and that makes me <laughs> sick because I don't want to take medicine. Yeah. You know, I just want to be uh, free. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, of course, there there are exercises. I mean, I know uh, many. Well, even even in clinics like Johns Hopkins, they recommend doing vocal work, vocal therapy to help. And in some cases, you can really get beyond it. I mean, sometimes it can also spontaneously go away. That has happened to people in the throat and also in the hand. I don't know if anyone here has heard of the, the pianist who just died this year, Leon Fleischer. He was a very, very fine pianist. And he had spasmodic, he had a dystonia in these two fingers. They would lock like this when he would play. The weak finger and the tiny he finger. He couldn't play anymore because, you know. And eventually he went through a lot of therapy. He became, in the meantime, a very fine piano teacher because he couldn't really perform. Right. And he performed pieces only with his left hand. Right. And then, uh, as he went through his therapy, the, the fingers started to relax and he was able to go back to playing again. It may never go away 100%, but it can heal. The thing that I agree with Mariana. The thing that would be to have to work on first would be the your breathing. Breath, you're, you're locked up in the breath. The breathing would have, to, have be to be yeah. worked on without any sound. Yeah. Without thinking about making vocal sound, mm -hmm. but with a relaxed, open throat first. The, you, your voice obviously is healthy. It's not that, you know. And I could hear the beautiful musicality in your uh, recording. Yeah, but you see, it comes from the neurotransmitters. It does. Yes. And hook up normally with my they vocal cords. Yeah, they misfire, so you get extra, yeah. So, so you I have a trembling, a trembling. So my, my thing is, okay, I have, a, I have a concert on the 3rd of July, and I said yes, because it's a friend. So I said, I will come. And it's, it's actually, uh, I called a friend of mine, a tr trumpet player, so we're going to just be the two of us. And I told her, I said, look, if I cannot sing, yeah. I will read some poetry or whatever, you know. But the thing is, uh, so now I'm like, yeah. what am I going to do? And also because mm -hmm. I can kind of sing in a talking voice. That's what I was going to ask. For me, that's not my thing. Me, yeah. I like to long notes i like melodies i like that you know there is a continuity in what i'm doing i don't want just to be like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh so i don't know what i'm gonna be able to do what about, what about singing uh um in, in your talking range now where you're speaking right now yeah your normal yeah. In voice okay and you, yeah. you okay i can we can hear the breathing isn't relaxed yeah. like it could be but what if you would, uh, just as a, a, to try something now, okay, uh, as you're talking, not singing, but as mm -hmm. Marianne said before, there's no difference between talking and singing. Yeah. yeah. As you're speaking to us now, it, I, I think that um, the people who, who speak, I don't know if they do this in French, but in Italian, sometimes people will e elongate a word. They'll say something like, <sighs> Ma non so, non so dove vado, ma forse domani. Okay, this kind of thing, right? I can see <laughs> he's laughing. Okay, so so <laughs> if you were talking to me right now, 
And you would say, okay, yeah. now I'm speaking, now oh. I'm speaking. C'est une affaire intéressante, qu'en pensez-vous? Yes. Well, that's completely different. Beautiful, now elongated, slow motion. C'est une affaire intéressante, qu'en pensez-vous? Yes. Okay, all right, even slower, slow motion, speaking. C'est une affaire intéressante, qu'en pensez-vous? <laughs> yes, no, yes. singing, you see. C'est une affaire intéressante, qu'en pensez-vous? Not bad, not bad. Okay, that's some something to work with. Yeah. Okay, I wish you were here right now. We would work with you. Well, I know, we, I know. We could, <laughs> we could soon, do some lessons soon. if you have to do this thing in July. We could work with you. We could work on uh, Zoom or Skype or something. But we, you, just to give you, a, maybe we can have a little lesson on the, sometime and give you something to work with. Yeah. Because definitely, you have to work on the breathing. Yeah. You're a very sensitive person and very yeah. temperamental. Temperamental. Temperamento. <laughs> Temperamento. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did. I have to say uh, co compliments for the, uh, the your musicality is beautiful. Yeah. I saw the. Oh, the, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, can I ask another thing? Yeah. You know, like uh, uh, for me, the thing that is happening in the world. The singers, especially in into pop, it's not Stevie Wonder, it's Whitney. Yeah, I know, you're right. Whitney created this, and everybody wants, <laughs> they want to sound like Whitney. Yeah. And the thing I is, do that. Yeah, she, had a, she had a magnificent instrument. Yeah. She was really? a contralto, a real she was contralto, a contralto, you know. But she... I don't, scream, she yelled. I don't know her mentality, you know, she, well, she, she was screaming words. and, you know. Yeah. We actually had yeah. a, a student who was very good friends with her and we, uh, and she was going to come to us to work on her voice, unfortunately. Things yeah, happened. I know what happened. And also when you're talking about the, 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 how did you say before? Pre uh, not the pressure, how do you call this? You know. You said if you let your face... Oh, the yeah, gravity? Oh, gravity, gravity. Yeah, what about that? Because I don't get it. Okay. What do you mean by... Well, for, we have to allow gravity to do its part. In other words, we, we fight all the time to sing rather than go with the body. Yeah. yeah. And one thing is when you learn to relax your jaw is to allow it to drop like a child does. Yeah. For instance, when a little kid looks up at a tall building. Yeah. Mm, okay. Well, uh -huh. If you take a very small child and you shake it, which you shouldn't, but let's say you give it a little shake, the jaw will go like this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when when you lock the jaw area, yeah, you lock information from right. your information from getting out and people's information from getting in. Mm -hmm, it's a right. lockdown, yeah. you know. And we do that sometimes. Some of us do that to protect ourselves. Okay. We, yeah. So we have to loosen all of these things, the joints, loosen. You know, the diaphragm is always working because you're breathing. Of course. But you have to learn where the sustaining is in the voice. The sustaining is always beneath the diaphragm. Beneath okay. the diaphragm for the higher, uh, uh, lower pitches and the whole complete dorsal area for the higher pitches. Yeah. So, and that you can do, by the way, by lying down often. Yeah. If you lie down and just listen to your body, yeah. Sing a little song, even a song you sang as a child. Yeah. Your body will work for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll feel the exact movements you need to, uh, they will do, it'll be automatic. Mm -hmm. You know, when we learn to sing, like this in quotes, learn to sing, mm -hmm. we're goofed up by these teachers. Also, when we want to deliver, they don't go song. for the nature. Yeah. You it's, know? it's also about performing because, yeah, if you take your mind off of the performing part of it, in reality, all really good performers are way inside. You know, you think of how okay. deep you are inside. Yeah, you stay in there. You lie lie on your side if it's comfortable, or find a nice comfortable place. Go through a melody in your mind without singing. And this 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 is for everyone. If you're listening to the notes in your mind, that's where they are. Mm -hmm. Exactly where they yeah. are. So those passaggio notes that you're talking about, the pass the passage notes. Yeah. If you can hear them. You know where they are. You mm -hmm. hear them fine. The problem is we get in there and then we interfere. We try to reach for them 
Mm -hmm. Voice is not up and down. It's not like high notes are here and low notes are there. It's all right here. Yeah. Right here. Sing, singing isn't structured. It's a reaction. Mm -hmm. You like a melody and you sing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a reaction to the music. One great singer, in my opinion, was uh, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. She was perfect from the beginning. Yeah, completely And look, even in the end of her life, when she was singing for Obama and everything, I mean, yeah. look what she could and she was do. Sick. What she's she amazing. Uh, just yeah. absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, she was completely spontaneous. Spontaneous. Yeah. For me, uh, singing, uh, that's that's always what I thought. It Like singing should not be an action. It just happens. That's right. That's right. It's not spontaneous. Yeah. Because when you do something, like it's it's to do something without doing it. Yeah. And uh, and then it comes. Well, and of course, yeah, exactly. Like, of course, I used to just not think at all. And it just what then stuff happens. Um, yeah. uh, you know, you have to perform. So you have to be boom. Yes, 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 and yes. and sound like they expect you to sound. This is this is really, that is a very dangerous path to follow. And when you're not now, you have this is something that's coming to your way. Okay, you have a problem, and it's telling you you have to do something. You need a different path now. Right, totally. Okay. So, totally. Okay. and the brain can also find new pathways. It can work in various ways. You know. Right. When you're having a neurological difficulty of this sort, it's it's not a disease that will make you sicker. It's something that it's a it's a it's a you know it, it, you can't cure it in the normal way, but you can definitely find a different way of working around it. And one thing that's important is to change your perspective. No longer think about outward. Yeah. The idea that we all have of projecting outward is wrong anyway. We don't. We can't project our voices. By the way, everyone, that is a myth. You can't project your voice because you are an instrument. You are a vocal instrument, just like a piano is a piano, a violin is a violin. They don't right. push their sound out. No, it's They're, all inside. They can't. They, yeah. We resonate in ourselves because that's where the instrument is, not yeah. out there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the idea of delivery. This is very difficult for a singer because we're not just an instrument. We're also a personality. We also have words. It's, it, I mean, it's great. We have the privilege of having words. It's the words that project. Well, the, the word, melody has to stay inside. Yeah, the the words will uh, define your feelings. Yeah, but your feelings is in the tone, and that's inside. Yeah, that's in your own head and your own body. I I think probably you're right when you say about the breathing. Yeah, the in breathing has case, to. I think you'll find a great we would, uh, relief with yeah. the correct breathing. We can just do something right now. If we just, have the time, Jack, is it okay? Oh, yeah, Jack? we do, yeah. Okay. All, right. All right, let's just do a little bit like this, like a child, okay? Just blow like this, lightly, lightly, lightly. I'm not talking about straw stuff, no, no way, no no. no. no, no, no. But just go. Yeah. You know when you're tired and you go, you're taking the load off. That's right. Continue with that for a bit. You know what? I can see physically your throat yeah. immediately open. Yeah, that's right. Your yeah. throat was not open. It. Now it's open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it. That's the same. That's the same function. What you're doing now is singing without the pitch. That's what singing is all about. In fact, interestingly, you know, if you would continue to do that, that, but you think your song in your mind, keep blowing. Allow the song to go through your mind. Yeah. Your body will respond as if you were singing. Yeah. Even the even the support will change. Yes. Very good. That's good. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I will do some of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's already taking you more inside of yourself. You can also do one other thing, and that is while you're lying in a very comfortable way and not thinking about performing, no. go through the song in your mind and very quietly whisper your words. Not the kind of whisper that hurts your throat. That's no. different. Yeah. I, I know that uh, Courtney asked that question before. Yes, whispering is not good for the voice. If you whisper like this, yeah. it's forced. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's very hard on the vocal cords. But if yeah. you whisper so you can't even hear it, but just you just say the 
mouthing the words of the song while you let it go on in your mind. Mm -hmm. You discover so many things about yourself like that and also the way the notes will come to you. They have to come to you. You don't go after them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how children, well, if they're not tampered with, sing. They I hear a song and they say their words and that's it. I mm -hmm. knew that I had something wrong with my vocal production when I was 14 because I was a very talented child and I had maybe five teachers by the time I was 14 and each one did their crunch on me. You know? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> um, and I thought to myself, this isn't right. Yeah. And I'm now 76, and I started to study at 14 to try and figure out, like, who can help me? Yeah. And I actually just went from teacher to teacher, and I had a lot of talent, so I went to every remarkable teacher in the world, you might say, right. in quotes, because they all did all their famous, damage. Yeah, yeah, and I beca basically became the teacher I was looking for. Okay. You know, to get rid of anything that's not necessary. Yeah, I, I hear you, definitely. Yeah. It's true. It's so true. And actually, I just also wanted to say that everything you you say is real because I've I know the difference. Yeah, yeah, you, so, I know. It's true. Yeah. I know. You know. can tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it. We've we've been through it. Both of us have been in every kind of vocal studio. I've all, I'm also a pianist, so I accompanied in other vocal studios, and I can say that there are no tricks or gimmicks. They don't work. They might work temporarily, mm -hmm. and. You Go to a, a teacher and they'll give you something to do and you go, wow, that's great. I finally can do that, whatever it is you were looking for. Mm. It doesn't last. It doesn't last. It's a Band-Aid. We yeah. don't match voices. We mm. just take away everything that doesn't belong there mm -hmm. so you can have your own voice back. Mm. You know, Because patching doesn't work. It was, some, some people get through their entire careers with a series of patches, but... You know, it also depends on musically how... Yeah, but they rip after a while. Yeah, well, also how much you want to give, how much you want to be yourself, you know. Right. You know. Well, let me <laughs> ask you, I do an exercise for myself that I think, I mean, it's a similar type it? of voice as yours. We have heavy you instruments. Don't get it too close because then she okay. can't see you. I want to get next to you, that's why. That's why I keep... <laughs> no, but I see you. I see you. It's fine. Okay. It's okay. 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 <laughs> I do an exercise myself because I always I'm always singing and, and teaching and yeah. uh, maybe maybe one day I'll be able to sing with the students something small not nothing important but something interesting. Yeah. Anyway, what I do now to protect my instrument to keep going further is right. this. <sighs> uh, very light like that. Can you do that? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you're higher than me. Uh, but I have this this uh, trembling, so it's it's not straight. It doesn't matter. You can even touch it and, and do it. Okay, you want to do it? I can. I think I can go down there. Too. We talk about the principle of it, though. Wait, wait. Just, just explain it one second. Okay, I will if you want me to. All right, explain it. The, the, let's say the principle behind this exercise is that air and tone are the same. One is without vibration, and one is with vibration. Right? Vibrated air is tone. Vibrated so air is tone. If yeah. you have air coming first, right, and then okay. you allow the vibration to arrive after you're exhaling for a little bit. It's as if you're doing this. I don't know if you can see this gesture, but as if the air is going. Yeah. Here comes the tone after it. Yeah. Okay. So it's like this. If it's I like do, gliding, no motor. It's like this. If you do the breath first, look. And then. And I add some sound. That's what yeah. you mean? Sound Just let it gently come in. vibrate yeah. wherever. It doesn't matter yeah. what pitch it is. It makes no difference. Yes, Good. perfect. Good. Don't start with the sound, start with the breath. Okay? Beautiful. Oh, that's nice. That's, that's beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That's very nice. And what I've done also that was very nice is wow, wow, wow. Which is a little bit the same. Wow. That's very nice for my friend. Yeah, wow is very nice. Yeah. 
Wow. It's great. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's kind of uh, bring everything together. Like it seems like the muscles are somewhere together. I don't know how to explain. Let's say they're cooperating. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's true. Two vowels, U, which is very small and dark and back. It was oh. this. And then ah, uh, which is really so. Wah. Wah. Yeah. Wah. 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 Can you do it with just an ah, like ah, ah, ah. Your note is down here. Ah, ah. Yeah. Wow. Right. Wow. Right. Right. That's so low. I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. The idea would be to get used to <coughs> no vibration first, so that when the vibration comes, it's the same thing. And yeah. you think a pitch. Yes, yeah, so you think a pitch like that note you just sang. Okay, you think of that note. You do no pitch first, and then you let the pitch come to you, the note you're thinking of. This is below my singing range. I can't sing this note. But I can breathe it out. Use your air as a guide. Air. Use, air. Use your yes. air as a guide. Yes. Uh, uh, always that channel of air. Don't disturb it. Don't don't stop the yeah. flow. Don't stop the flow. It does it naturally. I don't do anything. It's just let there. <laughs> do, you know, do you know any any songs? It's, you talked about a son. Maybe when he was baby, you sang to him, or somebody sang to you, or you sang when you were little. I have a song. Um, you want me to sing it? Yeah, like a child would. Yeah. Yeah. I got the sun inside my heart. <laughs> my heart. I can't even. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. Don't worry. I can't. I no. can't. And I, and I think it's because it's right where I cannot. Exactly. If I if I take something else, um, I can tell you why this is okay. happening. It's happening because you're mixing your word and your tone together. Yeah, they're separate. One, one they're separate. One, one goes out of your body. The word goes out of your body vertically. Is it vertically? Uh, Laterally, uh, hor like that. horizontally, horizontally. <laughs> your tone, goes, your <laughs> word goes out or like or that, but your <laughs> tone doesn't leave the body. It's always like this. It's in the body, and you're mixing the two up, so you're creating well, tension. Can can we go back to that other exercise she was doing? Because I think that was better, maybe than trying to sing a song. All right, I just wanted to so she could sing it like a a song that she knew as a child. I, so. yeah, well, okay, but maybe I think because of this dystonia, I think the important thing is. Breath first, mm -hmm. and then if a spontaneous sound comes, it will come. But what we don't want is this. Okay, we don't want. Uh, okay, uh, but okay. what you just what did, what was beautiful, spontaneous. That, mm -hmm. You went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, mm -hmm. What we want that is was perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <sighs> casual. Don't make sound. Don't try to make it. If it doesn't mm -hmm. come at all, that's okay too. Follow your air. Ah. ah, don't make a sound. We're That's doing, too why much. Don't, why don't we just do this, please? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just hold it a little longer, but don't mm -hmm. change it. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. If she mm -hmm. moves it, it's easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moves it around. Coordination it's that we're interested in, not the pitch or anything. The but you're coordination. Looking for the air. You're looking for the air. I'm looking for the air. Yeah. yeah, the air that's soft, and then it starts vibrating as friction gets the tone going. I, in. I think the best exercise is the the first one. Mm -hmm. No. The, <sighs> yeah. Well, I when just, she does for the attack, though, she's no, not. No, but she was doing it right before when you were doing it with her. Oh, like this. Yeah. Oh. Ah, ah. Like you could talk to a baby. Oh, you cute little thing, you. Oh, you're so cute. Sweet. That's oh, right. You're so cute. That's sweet. Oh, you're amazing. That's very good. 
<laughs> That's not invasive at all. Yeah, but you see when I'm going to come on the 3rd of July over there, I'm not going to say, guys, <laughs> you're amazing. Oh, delivery. <laughs> yeah, we, have to, we, can, um, we can have a meeting sometime. Okay, would you talk it over with um, <coughs> get the uh, information from... Uh, right. Yeah, and sounds like you you can't, they can't help but teaching. It's like... Uh, we can get from uh, Alessandra for before we before we finish, just like to give the other chance things. to uh, to come back with any any last thoughts. Yeah, that's right. We need to talk to everyone else, but hey. I think you, anybody who wants to uh, talk with us privately can get the information from Jack, and he yeah. will give you the person to contact who is our assistant, who can put you in touch with us. Then okay. okay? Um, I was thinking. Uh, yeah, everybody, if you have more questions, please ask them. I'm thinking about you, Tiz, in particular, because of the the question you asked before about the lending of the registers, and and I don't, I never use the term registers, but I'm using it because it's common thing well, to say. Well, there's head voice and chest voice. Yeah, know. basically, and then there's a mix. Um, but also about the other thing you asked about the, the diaphragm. Uh, um, do, and I was thinking about that particular question, and I was wondering if anybody else has any questions about that kind of thing, about uh, breathing or dumping. Yes, I see Courtney is raising her hand. No, Nikita is raising her hand. Okay, sorry, I was I was just going to jump in because um, um, Tiz's question was about, I guess, strengthening the mixed voice. Um, that's where. I still have uh, an issue. So Me when too. I when I got my polyp, I basically could sing low and I could still sing um, in my head voice, but I, I completely lost my mix. And that's when that like weird they, sounds. They, they deposit themselves, polyps and nodules, you find they interfere with the middle voice. Um, we don't usually use terms such as strengthening or power or anything like that in, in referring to voice. Well, certainly but, not with the tone because the tone has no dimension. That's right. Of power. It has only two dimensions. So um, it's it's hidden. It's like when I'm talking to you right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, you hear my words primarily, but yeah. if I cover my mouth and I continue talking, <laughs> you see how quiet the tone is? <laughs> yeah. That's a tone. It never changes, and it's not projected either. So you don't think of tone. Right. If you you're what you have to think regarding tone is be in tune, in tune with the pitch. What I was going to say about strengthening, which is a, you, before being able to strengthen something, you have to be able to do it quietly, and that means that in order to get everything lined up so that every note in your voice is identical in terms of uh, balance, in terms of let's say volume, okay, dynamic is that the, the heavier notes, which are the lower notes, because that's our chest voice, they have to be lightened up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing we do, <clears throat> if we wanted to do, uh, let's say, a little scale that was going from your lower voice into your middle voice, you would want to take your lower notes as quietly as you can. We would work usually with a closed mouth, but sometimes not. Sometimes we work right away with a little syllable, like say, oh. ooh, like say, <clears throat> Lu, 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 lu. Well, I wouldn't, take, I wouldn't you know, put the uh, consonant in. Do you think, you think that you will without no, a consonant? You I think would do without a, without, yeah? a without a consonant for the moment anyway. Okay. That depends on if you're able to say a normal ooh. Like, or an ah. Yeah. I like ah personally. But I is, do too. Ooh is nice because it's small. You ooh know. is more protective for yeah. a singer who hasn't, hasn't been working. Hasn't the, the courage to do the ah right away. Yeah. But we, we believe, or you can do it immediately on words. Uh is as long as you don't push on the tone. So what we do is we take a, a melody or a scale or any kind of, a, you know, any song that has close together intervals, not where you have to leap big distances, and we go quietly, like say, uh, uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And we let the voice be quote unquote, weak first, fragile. You don't get strength unless you have fragility. What singers tend to do now is go after the power in the voice right away, thinking that this is going to strengthen the instrument. It doesn't, it actually weakens the voice in the long run. Because if you continue to push on the voice, 
<clears throat> you have no choice. Then you have to push. Because otherwise, your voice won't respond anymore. Well, every instrument has forte piano, you know. Yeah, yeah. So the way to build, uh, let's say, a solid balance in the voice is to be sure that your relationship between your tone and your air is quiet and and perfect. And that would be like what we were doing before when we were doing, we were blowing out and we were doing, we are blowing like, and allowing the little air to come back in the mouth. It would be like if you would say the syllable C. You say C, C, C. Try that. Sorry, Tiz or, or myself? Uh, just say like the like Anybody? C. Like, yeah. C. C in the back. Yes, C. You also say the C. C, 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 C. C, C. Observe yourself while you're doing that and see C. if by the time you say C and you stop, you get a little tiny bit of air come into your mouth. C, C, C. C. You do? You notice Yeah, it? I, I do. Yeah. You're not taking in big gulps of air, right? Okay. This well, is. That's very important. Yes. That's all we have to sing with is that. This is that little the sip. fundamental relationship between the air and the tone is that. It's strange to say because I know everybody that studies voice is taught that they have to enhance their breathing in some way. You don't. That's well, that's I, a big mistake. In fact, it's, it's very injurious to the voice in the long run. It weakens the instrument. Could I? Uh, I think it's time to like, talk about that breath a second. Yeah, okay, maybe it is. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah. Tone starts after the exhalation. And why does it start there? Because you get rid of, we don't sing with our lungs. We don't. We have to sing with the re, the reserve. What do you call that? The well, the fundamental minimal reserve. Minimal yeah. reserve. I mean, <clears throat> we, we don't have, use medical terms. It that. would be just like an athlete. When you see a guy running in a park, <sighs> he's working on his mental reserve because if he were working with his lungs, he wouldn't be able to run. Because well, if you are heaving in and out like that with your lungs you would soon get very, very tired because air is very heavy. So what he's done without knowing is he's gotten down to his minimum, minimum reserve. And how you do that is to just blow out. You could do it fast. When the air, when you no longer hear the exhalation of the air is the time the tone starts. So you could do it quickly like, ma, me, mi, mo, mu, ma, me, mi, mo, mu. And then it's only fed by little, little, that's right. It's fed only by these little sips. And you're in a state of compression in your body. Your lungs are no longer expanding and contracting. That would be very injurious. Yeah, it's... Um... It's really working on the minimum. So you have the maximum energy. Athletes do it all the time when they're running. They could never run if when they were... When you swim, you do the same thing. And when you're swimming, too. They take... Yeah. One little sip and you keep going. You don't never take a big gulp of air or you would slow down because you'd be filling your lungs with too much air. <clears throat> yeah, it's basically what we were... Well, we didn't talk about it exactly before, but we started to. I think, Tiz, I think you, you, I can see you're, you're questioning something. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I just on this on this topic, I guess, of that, that mixed voice or blending the voice, um, how do you guys feel in, about uh, lip trills or lip rolls for, for helping to blend them? They're they don't, they're useless. And all those are gimmicks. Okay. Every one of them Listen, are gimmicks. Listen, the thing, the thing about all of these is every kind of exercise that's been invented like this, maybe somebody who can really sing very well does it for themselves. You know, they might have done it once and then all of a sudden it caught on as a fashion. All right. And now everybody does it because somebody did it once. Who knows? This is very typical, like putting a cork in the mouth. You know, somebody might have said that. The trouble with teaching voice, by the way, is that we have studied with some people in our lives who really were excellent singers. They were from very, very long ago. They were born at the beginning of the 1900s, and they were wonderful opera singers. We met them when they were old. They would tell us what they thought they were doing. They would try to make us feel what they felt. This never works. You can't teach a person a sensation. You can only teach them what is actually 
physiologically normal. It's not my opinion that matters at this point. It's actually what, what your body wants to do. Trilling, lip trills, buzzing, They're sirens, all, all those things. Gimmicks, that people are doing. gimmicks. They are gimmicks. And if you have an already free voice, I can do a siren. It doesn't bother me. But it doesn't teach me anything about singing. You know, I can practically do anything with well, my voice. Well, you have nothing <laughs> in common with a siren as a singer. Nothing I mean, in common whatsoever. Well, I don't... Yeah. I, it means that, nothing. That means it, nothing. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. And that is not a musical tone either. And also, it just always makes the singer concentrate on how do I get a sound. And that's not what we're supposed to go after. We don't have to get a sound. We have a sound. We have it internally. What we have to do is learn how to balance it with the, with the air and with our words. Because in the end result, the three things have to work beautifully together. All of those other things give temporary results you know they uh like putting the tongue down or lifting the tongue up or lowering the larynx or raising the palate all of those things are positions that are imposed upon the voice and they might give some results or crouching I mean, as opposed to some people teach crouching and putting you know putting all your weight in your abdominal muscles to make yourself stronger or going to the gym oh there is there's a myriad of wrong things to do. Yeah, and you could, we could probably. But there's only three things that you have to occupy your mind with. Yeah. Air, tone, and word. Yeah. And so they have to be in balance. The, when we talk now, we're talking on, when Marina said before, after we have inhaled for life, what we're speaking on is the, the remaining volume of air in the lungs after we've exhaled what we needed to live, right? We, we don't take a breath and then talk. We also can't take a big breath and laugh. Try it. Have you ever had that experience? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You exhale when you laugh. You have to. Any physiological function of the voice is done on the minimal amount of air that's remaining in the lungs after we've exhaled. Mm -hmm. If you take a big breath and then push it all toward the throat, you're creating tremendous tension in the vocal cords, and they end up having to do two jobs at once, which they're not supposed to do. So you can imagine a curtain flapping in the breeze. These two fine little vocal folds, these thin little bits of membrane, they're strong little things, yes, but they're not supposed to do all that work. So we're, we're making them vibrate and hold back the air, and it's, it's, it's wrong. Well, and then it's the same thing. Uh, let me hear the, the sound of the, the, the awe when you whisper it. I want to just you're talking, hear that. You're talking to Tis now, right? You, yeah. Because you can't see where you're looking. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, uh, just of the awe? Yeah, it's like this. I think, I think yes, I, I'm pretty sure you're a tenor. Yeah, I think so too. Yes. Tenor. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I would say, wait, I, just give me one moment. You can okay. say something because I, I was... You've got a thought going. I wanted to work with something with you to show you something. You Go ahead. Um, about, we were just talking about all the various gimmicks that you can use. Um, all of these things create a concentration, make make the singer concentrate on getting, well, an, on ambition, let's put it that way, on the ambition to get somewhere in a hurry, because that's what we're all after, especially people who are already in the process of performing. We think, oh my God, I've got a performance next week, how am I going to get that note? How am I going to make that phrase? Whatever. Okay. We know that this is the world we live in, but we're trying to help singers to, to balance themselves, even though they have those problems. Many times, especially when we work with classical singers, we ask them to stop singing for a while because classical music is demanding on a different level. We don't have microphones. We have to do exactly what's written in the score. We can't transpose anything, you know. So we, it's, it's a big stress. On, and so we ask people to please stop singing for a while. In some cases with our pop students or actors that we work with, jazz singers, we've also asked them to take a little sabbatical if they can because everything in the throat needs to relax. We have to go back to nature. And if you keep hammering away at your voice, you know, doing those exercises, lip trills and straw and oh, all of this, all you're, you're fighting your nature. Could you do just this on that pitch? A little lighter. Perfect. Very nice. Take song. that down. Okay. There you went right through that middle 
malaria. You That's perfectly balanced. Okay. Then take it down right to beat the one. chest. Stop. <laughs> Do I need to try that now? Or is that okay? Do it slowly, but, but, but a little, yeah, not too long. Stop, and then stop, stop there. And then on the same pitch. Okay. That's your instrument. Yep. That's perfectly balanced. Yeah. It's like giving you, a, I don't know, a sax or whatever, and it's perfectly balanced out of the shop. That's how you have to work. You have no choice. Okay, thank you. Perfectly That's balanced, too. Da, 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 da. That's from F on the top. If I would do... That's what yeah. you did, Dr. Floor. So that's from F on the top of your voice, which is not quite your head voice. G would be your head voice. If you do, that's a, that's a head pure head voice note. Well, we'll give... Yeah. Yeah. And right down to a B flat on the bottom, which is the bottom of your voice, more or less, would be the lower range of your voice. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think... Uh... You, you just can't stop teaching. This is just, well, we all can see that now, the passion for the voice. I just wanted to say something to I you. love to teach. No. I, every day I wake up and I go, oh my God, who do we have today? You know, it's like my, <laughs> yeah. it's my high every yeah. day. We'll, we'll continue doing this. You have to stop us. You realize that. Yeah, we've been two and a half hours now and I think everyone is... Uh, <laughs> is just, any, any closing, just a few last words, no questions, but just... Uh, have to stop. Well, all I can say is there is nothing more beautiful in the world than having the ability to sing. It's true. Singing mm. is it. The most important thing in the world because it gives people peace, happiness, mm. unity, harmony, everything. Yeah, yeah. everybody <laughs> wants to sing. Yeah. Everybody should sing. Uh, wow. Any final comments? Anyone have any final just, thoughts? Uh, I just wanted to say something to Nikita. Yes. Okay, so I, what I believe for you, don't, don't try to strengthen anything. <laughs> no, because really because it's now, your voice is the most beautiful, it's right now. And on this passage voice or, you know, like all this, don't just, do you sing classical? No. You sing pop? Um, Years and years ago, I was first, when I first started taking lessons, I was classical, but now I'm pretty much fully pop. Okay. Because this thing you have that is kind of fragile is the beauty. It's a beauty. So don't try to make your voice like a big block of something. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> You're wow. right, you know. That's yeah. Right. Because otherwise you're going that... <laughs> to have troubles later on. The the um, important thing, that you're, you're absolutely right. She's absolutely right. This is right. The thing is, we never, that's why I said we don't like to use words like power and strengthening. But I understand what you're asking. And what we want out of our voices is to be able to speak freely on every pitch of the voice without interference. That's what we want. And the way you get um, stronger is by being able to talk on a note. Any note. Once you talk on a pitch, that's strong. Well, it's balance. You know, balance. But, you know, but you have to do it first quietly, and you must allow for that beautiful fragility, that almost danger feeling where, uh oh, uh oh, the note, you know, it's like, ah. it has to feel like that so that you don't strengthen with muscle. Because if you even think the term strengthen, you're going to use a trick to try to strengthen it, and then something else will get weaker. That's how that works. Mm -hmm. okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Jeff, you're there in the dark. We see you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am. Yes, it's got dark through the. We've been through the show. It's got darker and darker. But uh, well, I just want to say thank you so much for giving of your time here to help these singers and hopefully many more listening to this recording. I hope we're um, to all of you. We hope if you have any more questions, I mean, it's this is not easy because the questions that we know, basically questions that singers have and what we want to do immediately as soon as somebody asks us anything is start to work with them. Of course, we can't mm -hmm. help it, you know. Um, but we, 
I think probably what you might have noticed is that we don't have any tricks or patches. Mm -hmm. What we do have is a way of removing tension from the instrument, removing obstacles from the voice, and then trying to uh, allow the singer to find their nature Okay, through the balance of the three fundamental elements. There are only three. We have a student who, we have a tenor who says it's like making pizza. There are only three things, flour, yes. yeast, and water. That's it. That's and it. according to the proportion, you get a delicious <laughs> pizza or not. Well, it's <laughs> well I've, I've learned so much just from watching you teach these five singers um, just how just the natural approach and uh it's been really been a wonderful experience so uh, we realize that it's it's quite different than what a lot of mm. people are teaching now and well, by I, taking away the crutches and the gimmicks we're not giving you something to so, let's say substitute well that, it's all know. based on physiology and acoustics yeah that's so it. if physiologically you're going to do something strange you're not going to get a correct mm. acoustical effect either yeah so it has to line up those things have to line up yeah that's right all yeah. right. So I okay. guess I, I guess we have to leave you now. Well, you know? we could, we could keep going all night, but yeah. I know, I know, but it was really really nice meeting all of you. We're very happy that. Let we're us able know to about meet. your concert on July fourth. Well, huh? get in touch with us if you want food, yeah. Jack. He'll give you. Yes. A yeah. Okay. And okay. well, we'll talk. All right. Okay. Great. <laughs> Take care, everybody, and happy Thanks. singing. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Happy singing. <laughs> Be gentle with your voice. Thank you. Oh, Love your welcome. instruments. Okay, yeah. take care. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.
I know, I know, I said I wasn't going to do a song. So uh, it was originally my plan. But I, so I edited the episode the night after that we did it. But then I woke up in the morning and I had a song come into my head. So that delayed the whole production. And I've now already seen the episode. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I got a lot of insights into the psychology of people and how it affects their voice. Um, I'm really fantastic. Thanks so much. If you want to contact them for singing lessons, I put the email address and their website in the show notes. Please don't all email me asking for their email. All right. Thanks to my musicians, Mauricio San Nicola, Massimino Vozza, Dori Verbo, my researcher, and Luigi Falcione. Okay. See you next time.